It's got a bit of a post-game problem. There's nothing to really do with your power post-game. And I think because the simulation doesn't really simulate any growth or action, there's not a lot of end to the means. It's not like finishing off a really nice logistical network in open TTD, where you sit back and you watch the cities grow, you see the ebb and the flow of the goods. In this one, goods just kind of evaporate and have nothing to show for themselves. No matter how many units of beer and adhesive and cattle you deliver to a sector, the sector's not going to react in any way. You just get paid and the goods get... Well, just poofed away out of existence. Not that I think that's something the game should focus on. It's not where the game's focus is. Honestly, I think the game should get rid of maybe two-thirds of the goods that it has because they're just useless. The only goods worth knowing in this game are goods used for making weapons. Your turrets and the like. And the rest of the goods, I, I don't know why they're even there. Why do accelerators exist? They're amazing for selling, but they're not used for anything at all. Okay, never mind that. Let's get back to it. it's a Vorion. It's unscheduled today, probably unwanted on the schedule, and continues to be some channel suicide to direct so much of my time and effort to this, but I feel compelled to round off the perfect Hansa. Just about everything is done. Here we go. Uh, we've made all unique subsystems of the legendary version, including the storyline ones, including the one I didn't know about to begin with, which was... The Wormhole Power Diverter. Uh, that one I did know, but this one I did not. The Overloader. Did not know you could get that in legendary, but it's been made. On top of that, we've gotten all the building knowledges, we've got an unspendable amount of resources, and we'll be testing that empirically, because I have a lot of resources I need to spend on industry. We've built our gigantic monolith to Shefrin, and we're going to check that out momentarily. We've charted the entire universe, and every faction has now been allied or eliminated. The only ones that got eliminated were the crappy little cultists that we don't care about to begin with, but everyone else in the galaxy is our lovely friends, to the point where I can finally use my preferred map mode here, which is faction colouring rather than relation colouring. Normally I have relations on, so that I know who to avoid. This generally shows red for those accursed buccaneers and lovely green for my allies. I also wonder if that's what's causing some lag on the galaxy map as it tries to calculate this, because notice it's taking a long time to figure out friend from foe and show it on the map. Hey, Baron! You know how delightful it was to see that twice in a row I missed your streams because they were done at midnight my time? Okay, I caught a little bit of the VOD. Good to see that Quark is doing well. And by well, I mean denied his own faction. There we go. Everybody is my friend. I did a painstaking process of going around everywhere, getting up their relations and getting them allied. But it is done, so it never has to be done again. One can only hope. Uh, have I done a count on that? I don't think I have. Uh, what would this be? Status ascending to descending? All of our enemies will be the unique things, like Behemoth or Pariah, or they'll be Cults and Syndicate? Ah, okay, that's not a problem. That's just a, um, a little black marketplace, not worth our time or our money, but yeah, it's going to be mostly pirates or uniques. And then there are these weird uh, so-called factions from those god-awful black market DLC missions. And then the rest of them are, well, these are syndicates, we've got some more of the unique ones. I have no idea what this is. This just came out of nowhere one time. I think it was one of the optional bosses started making this appear, but I can't declare war on them, I can't do anything with them. And then beyond there, every actual faction is my ally. Actually, I do think I counted these. Once I'd gone through every single one of them, I counted them up. Did I write down the number? Yeah, apparently there are 176 of them. That is a whole lot. I'm never doing this again. Anyway, with that out of the way, what is left to do? The people who are asking what's left to do in the game and what they're really asking is, Jake, when will you stream something other than a Boreon? Well, don't you worry, because all that's left to do is to get those two remaining milestones and build up the industry. Industry is going to be long and thankless, but at least it'll uh, tangentially involve some spreadsheeting, which I know some people are 
actually here for. In fact, that was a funny criticism I got for the perfect hands. That's like, it just doesn't have enough spread sheeting. It's nowhere near the level of spread sheeting we had for perfect hands in Patrician. And I hate to say it, by the conclusion of this, I'm actually just going to be hungry for doing another game in this style. By which I mean completely 100%ing it. But I have some stipulations for games that I like to do this kind of run on. Specifically, they tend to have to involve simulation. I don't care about 100%ing something like Final Fantasy X or State of Decay, because those don't really st uh, simulate hands-off in the same way that, say, Transport Tycoon does or Patrician 4 does. Anyway, getting ahead of myself, one thing we absolutely want to do is appreciate the power of Chefrin. I built him last time. Let's see him in use, because a fun thing that can be done is every 30 minutes or so, the end boss respawns, so you get to have a showdown with them once again. And uh, it's just Chefrin looking at them from his comfy seat, deploying his fighters out of his throne and out of his menacing red eyes, which also have... Uh, actually, can I, can I deploy into a drone and get a, get a look on Chefrin there? Whoa! Game is not best pleased with, uh, with trying to render all of this at once, but we can really get a, a sense of scale for the magnificence of Chefrin here. Chefrin now asking how long a piece of string is. <laughs> Chefrin's just wanting to show off all of his wee holiday photos to the Zotan wormhole menace. He's even got giant cannons coming out of his eyebrows. wonder if I could have him do a bit of friendly fire on the drone. Wiggling his wee eyebrows. Those red bits in his, hair, uh, in his eyes are just hangers for fighters to come out of. Cannon off of his wee beard as well. But yes, the, the poor end boss doesn't know what hits it. I'm going to be back into Chefrin. Don't worry, I know it looks a bit of a slideshow here. That's just all of the moving parts here. Chefrin's full fleet of fighters going out, asking the Wormhole Guardian several basic mathematics questions. That game was great to run. I wish someone else would run it so I could enjoy watching them struggle with it. And even though it tries to channel the wormhole energy, it's just not going to amount to anything. Chefrin's absurdly powerful fighter force out there. And yeah, I, I do think that it's those coaxial... Um, I forget if it's lightning or plasma guns. I think it's plasma. Yeah, coaxial plasma guns seem to make the best fighters in the game. The DPS on these things are immense. And on top of that, every time the, uh, the boss dies, I get this enormous influx of goodies. can actually check and see what is still pinging up as new in the inventory. What did I even grab there? Yeah, nothing that I'm going to grab in the game is going to come close to what we can make ourselves. But I can always check DPS per slot for gunner things. And I can also get rid of all these shiny ones by marking absolutely everything as trash. And then unmarking absolutely everything as trash, resort it. So yeah, these are the favourites, the weapons we've been making in our own custom-made turret. Except for you, that's a party popper for Baron. Uh, and then the next best things we have are some admittedly pretty good DPS on the ambivalent yin-yang. And this coaxial rocket launcher with 15,000 Omicron. That's pretty good, but we have 50 thousand Omicron on this other thing. Also some aliens warped in and uh, I'm just going to antagonize them slightly. And then Cafre gets to have another go with them. I didn't want to just leave those aliens existing in this sector. Pretty powerful aliens though. Look at that. Firepower quarter of a million Omicron on them. But unless they are anti fighter ships. They really don't stand a chance against my fighters. And even if they are anti-fighter ships, these fighters are pretty damn good. Can I get a stat on those pilots, by the way? Yeah, there we go. I think uh, since they're level 3 pilots, highly experienced, they're able to dodge a lot of shots. Chefrin is so powerful, he kills your frames, but how many frames? <laughs> Oh, man, just truly wish somebody would step up and give the Chefrin game another go, because I, I enjoyed it so much. 
But that's one of the curses of streaming. Sometimes I really enjoy a game, but I would enjoy it more to watch someone else play it. But they don't want to play it, they just want to watch me play it. It's the case with so many games I want to watch. DDR, Sheffron's Pyramid, Slay the Spire, The Long Dark. Why won't people spare a thought for what I want to see? Good lord, that poor, poor battleship right there. It's actually doing a good job of going away from the fighters. One problem with the fighters is that they are slow. So if you're able to just get away from them, you'll generally be okay. But if you ever dare to slow down, you're going to have a very bad time. And unfortunately, you're still within Sheffron's view. Sheffron, of course, not completely uh, at the mercy of his own fighters. Sheffron enjoys having two shoulder-mounted rapid ruiner seeking rocket launchers, a couple of bolters, some plasmatic over Teslas, some cannons of his own, pulse guns, and also some rail guns. Sheffron is fully capable of battle. The only thing he can't really do is move. No thrusters, no ability to move uh, either, because what he is, is he's a travel hub. That was a bit of a debate between whether he should be a travel hub or a casino. But Travel Hub felt quite right, because he does love to show off all of his travels. We haven't actually used a Travel Hub in the entire game. When you go to a Travel Hub, you can pay to have a boost done for your next jump. The problem is it's agonizingly expensive, and even the cheap ones also require you to bring goods. Now, energy cells are perfectly acceptable, so the 15 range booster isn't outrageous. But when do you ever need a 15 jump distance booster? You could get that even in the early game by using two or three jump boosters, and then you'd have to pay for it. Um, ugh, plasma cells for 25. Yeah, I don't, I don't see the utility of this. If you didn't have to pay the goods, then maybe. But it's still a tough one because most of the time, early game, you'd be jumping that blindly. I don't, I don't see the use for it. So anyway, that was just to show Sheffron utterly annihilating the end boss, as if it weren't even there. Uh, we did turn on behemoths, but only to kill the behemoths and get their goods, because then I just disabled behemoths. I don't particularly like the way that they are implemented. Uh, what else is there to care about? There is my merchant, actually. My merchant needs to head on over to my turret factory, so I can drop them off. Yeah, I played Kenshi, but I didn't like it. Um, has a lot of good things going for it, but there there is a point where there is too much jank in a game, and Kenshi absolutely realizes that. So, two milestones are left to go, and we're going to do them both right now, I reckon. I don't know how long one of them's going to take. Hopefully not very long, because it's not very exciting. It's this, the Into the Rift storyline. We've done all the other Rift missions. We brought a fleet of five into the Rift. We did it with a friend, uh, good old Andarius helped me out by joining in a rift mission that you can instantly complete. Uh, I have saved all of the scientists, go me. And then we did what I suppose was meant to be tough, uh, depth 75 with a small ship, 600 kilotons or lower, which I think's about one tenth the size of our flagship. Uh, still very easy though, we just brought in some coaxial rocket launchers, blew up all the enemies and then away we went after staying for 15 minutes after the swarm. So all that is done, we're just chewing through the storyline, and chew we must. Because as, as much as I could honestly just say, right, we're done here, there's nothing left to achieve, it wouldn't be right to leave this anything short of 100 percented Even watching Kenshi, I didn't find that engaging, just ended up not being the game for me. But that's okay, I play a lot of games, go figure, some are for me and some are not for me. So this is the Rift Fodder ship that we have set up. Uh, why those aren't on auto-fire, I do not know. It's got a couple of astonishingly eye-wateringly powerful phalanx rocket launchers, which are burst firing and seeking, as well as a few other weapons that are just there to be long range and heat seeking, and some good point defense on top of just really good everything. I like this ship, my Rift Fodder ship. But what do we still have to do for the... Uh, the quest line, I truth be told can't remember. Let's ignore distress signal and search and rescue and expedition. I'm not going to ignore special contracts because, ugh, like that, it just pings you up with new ones. 
I try to keep this to the minimum number of emails that I can have in my inbox. But there is somebody who isn't here for some reason. Am I just in the wrong place? I reckon I am. I'm not at a Rift Research Center, that's the problem. Rift Fodder. If you could be so kind to go to a Rift Research place, preferably one that's outside of the, uh, the center, because the center is a pain for me, and the game agonizingly loads all of those. All right, seems like there's one right over... Oh, that's called Rift Alpha. Alpha, what are you rifting now? Shipyard, repair dock, equipment dock. How quickly can you get over here? I don't have 11 minutes to spare for you. So... So, so, so. I think there's an equipment dock in this sector. There it is. Let's go and get ourselves some jump boosters and head over there. I'd like to play Keeper RL again, now that it's 1.0. I have so many games to go. Eve, Shadow Emp... Oh, God. Immediately naming two, two horrible games. I think I played Shadow Empire and it was awful. Butterlord and Dominion 6. Now, Dominion 6, I'm just waiting on some of the mods to be ready for it. I really want the uh, Nation Gen and Bless Gen mods from Dominions 5 back, but those sadly those aren't being produced at the moment. Tragic, I know. Right, what's going on with you? Uh, really, I just want you to jump farther and faster, so I'm just going to tear out a couple of these and then put in... Uh, some jumpers. I'm going to give you Botan, and I'm going to give you a pretty m monstrous hyperspace cooldown and jump range. Yeah, well, I'll give you two of them. The only point of putting these things is to get you to your destination faster. That's right. Fast traveling is really easy if you just have the right subsystems for it. And there we go. Done in one minute. The route is too short. Oh, I actually give you so much jump boosting that you can just jump there? That doesn't sound right. The route is too short. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I might be wrong about something. Do you actually have a hyperspace jumper? You should have an Avorion. Oh, you don't. Okay, right. There's the problem. There's where the entire problem has been. I never gave you, for some reason, an Avorion hyperspace core. Which seems strange. I give everyone an Avorion hyperspace core. But you appear to have no hyperspace core whatsoever. Do you have any framework? Doesn't look like you do. Tell you what, I think you have a, a wafer thin shield generator. I'm going to turn that into a hyperspace core. Donk. And just like that, you will no longer complain about this. Yeah, I'll put you over here next to the other guy. Yeah, that's two minutes. I wanted a one minute journey, which has now become two minutes. Okay, fair enough. Get over there. So the problem there was that in order to bypass rifts when traveling, you need a hyperspace core made of, of Orion. It can be of any size. It could be a single tiny little pixel of it that costs only one piece of Avorion, or it could be half your ship. As long as you have a little bit of it, you can jump through rifts, and that's what they needed to do. While we're waiting on that, I believe Merchant has gotten to position. I actually put Merchant on, uh, I think, a couple days long acquisition goal. Kept my explorers busy and certainly kept the, uh, kept you busy. And now you can go over to Turret Factory Cargo Ship and transfer over some juicy goods. Electromagnetic charges, yes. Targeting cards, yes. Servos, hell yes. Laser modulators, hell yes. And now there should be no shortage of goods for you if I wanted to go and build some turrets using our inventory blueprints, of course. Looking good, looking good. Well, maybe we could do with more industrial Tesla coils, but honestly, it was the servos that kept costing me. I had to get more of those. Yeah, we're good, we're good. We've got over a thousand of everything that we need, even for our giant phalanx bursting rocket launchers, even the ones that have the extra long range. Mm. God, I love this freaking weapon. I'm just going to build like five more just because I love it so much. Anyway, thank you, Merchant Man. I'm going to bring you back over to where the rest of the explorers are. Get you back over there on the doubloons and rift fodder. 
it's time to rift, even if we don't particularly want to. I'm using a custom AI community pretender mod that makes fun and interesting combos available to the AI. Really? I'd be interested to hear how that works. Um, I may or may not be thinking of the right game, but I'm pretty sure I played Shadow Empire and it was just too much Gary Grigsby's War in the East for me. As in, you gotta dedicate your life to loving war games for this. But it's possible I'm thinking of the wrong game. Right, so, Yavanna and Zach von Uberstein are these weird characters who want us to keep going into the rifts and doing these missions. And I don't really want to, because I'm not particularly sold on rift missions to begin with. But, it's a necessity for filling out all of these rift expedition things. New rift expedition data recovery, hopefully not an incredibly tough one. Uh, doesn't mention it here, but let's just start the mission. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, I've got I've got too large a ship for it. Huh. I don't think size would be such a problem, and I don't want to lose half my shift when teleporting. So it seems I really am going to have to scale down here. That's okay though, it can certainly be done. I can just take the whole ship and scale the thing down. The only shortcoming, or potential shortcoming, is going to be the amount of uh, subsystems that I have access to. But whilst we are in your range, let's do it. Let's tear out these things that I just put in for the sake of jumping along faster. Which uh, might include you, actually. Definitely want my hardened reviving bulwark. But I might be able to slim down on these. Tell you what, I'm just going to rip everything off. And then I'm going to scale the ship down to the, necess uh, the necessary size. And what was the necessary size? 290 kilotons. So what we do is we not modify the entire ship. It's worth noting that I could remove a fair bit of the armor to lose a lot of weight or mass. I'm actually going to start... No, because if we get uh, subspace interruptions, that armor could be very necessary. All right, take the entire ship, modify the thing down to 75%, and then it's already, bang, 255 kilotons. That's well within range, and now the game is complaining at me that I have too many crew members. I wish Malcontent were here so I could deposit those. Oh, I wish when we can just do. Malcontent, I want you over here on the double. Malcontent will be here in two minutes. Thank you, Captain and Darius. Whilst that's going on, I can suss out what subsystems I want to have. Naturally, I need a bulwark, and I got no problem using a legendary bulwark for this. And I need a shield to energy, or energy to shield generator. I'm gonna slam in two of those. Will I be happy with two? No. Will I be happy with more than two? Yes. That's more like it. 10 million in impenetrable shields, which of course means I have no energy whatsoever. That's one way to get rid of the crew. So I want the generated energy booster. I think I'll make do with this one. Mm, I will not. It's not strong enough. Do I want to use a legendary one? going to splurge and use the stupendously good unique one. And then on top of that, what I really need are more armed turrets. So since I am drowning in these, I'm actually going to use legendary ones just to fit more guns on here. And just like that, I still don't have enough slots for all these guns. But that's okay, because I can just remove one of you. And then I may be okay. I am okay. Wonderful. You're on two. The ones are on auto. Good. Very good. Still the coaxials going out the side are working fine since those are my... Wait, what is that? What is denied for me? Oh, because I got smaller, I... Uh, a bunch of my cargo just pooped right out, didn't it? That is funny. 
Malcontent, I need to go over to you and deposit my crew. I don't really worry about losing some bits of Rift research data here and there. Uh, I have already acquired hundreds of thousands of it, courtesy of my merchant. I sent the link in the Discord for the mod. Thank you kindly. That's what it's there for. Right, let's just transfer over some of these unnecessary crewmen. I say that, but... Uh, how many of them are truly unnecessary? I only have the space for 185 of them. Perhaps I could take 50 of you off. Okay. Then I can take 20 of you off. Also okay. And then I go and transfer over all of you guys. Wow, we do not have a lot of spare space, do we? But that's okay. That's part of the whole rift thing anyway. Working within our limitations. I actually have a bunch of defensive turret slots going free, but I'm not even going to bother with that. We're just going over to the transporter, or teleporter, or whatever it is, and get to work all the while. Malcontent, attack any enemy that appears in the sector. I don't want to blow... Uh, I've never seen it happen, but what if somebody comes in and blows up all of the Rift research stuff in a sector whilst you're busy doing stuff in the Rift? It came up during multiplayer. Just a question, though. We never explored it further. Hey, Yavanna, are we doing this or what? Ah, I see she's already there. And Darius is saying, I hope you have a lovely day. Most of my days are lovely. And this one is not any exception that I've noticed. Right. There's actually a funny phrase here. We transport matter into rifts. What's the matter today? Rift fodder doesn't fulfill all the constraints. There's not enough free cargo space. Well, uh, I don't particularly care about any of these. And I hope I'm not set to collect them back. Do I have enough now? Rift environment insufficient. Tell me more. The rift power here is seven, uh, 17, rather. You only have seven protection. That sounds like not my problem. Let's go anyway. I even know what this uh, this mission is. I hope I don't need to do anything too important. Dumping cargo like that's so painful. Cargo is now meaningless in this game, though. With the sole exception of goods for making guns, and even that, I have loads of guns and loads of goods for making guns. It's uh, it's almost sad how irrelevant we've made so many things in this game now that we're at the end of it. I don't even know what this mission is. I'm going to have to pay attention here. I want to get these. I want to get this milestone done. I don't suppose anyone knows how many missions there are in this thing. Right, search for the lost expedition, retrieve their data, which tells me I will need to turn on collection of cargo. And the moment I fly out here, our ship's probably going to be battered by whatever affects this thing. What do we have? Acid fog that will constantly damage us, even through the shields. Uh, inertia, movement is not accelerating as quickly. And ionized stuff is disrupting shield generation. All good stuff. So what do I have to do? I think I need to locate some old probes or something. Oh, you know what? I, didn't, I totally did not put on my adventuring companion, which would have helped a lot with this, I'm sure. There's some boys here. There's some weird stuff over there. There's this monolith. I don't know if that's going to do anything. Uh, it sounds like my friend is busy shooting, but that also sounds like not my problem. What's this? Expedition wreckage. That can be what we're after. Our ship is already getting blasted apart by the acidic fog. Alright, and the moment we start scanning this thing, the Zotan are very unhappy, but it looks like Yabana is happy to go and kill them on my behalf. That's fine. The auto guns will also happily kill on my behalf. Attack any and all targets. Uh, truly any target, not just the ones I'm looking at. I couldn't get past the first 10 minutes myself. I appreciate Jake playing it for me. I trust you're talking about Avorion there. 
what's this? Use salvage lasers to extract the salvage lasers? I didn't bring salvage lasers. Um, I've got salvage rockets. Which are doing a good job of completely missing the target. In fact, not one of them's hitting the target here. Uh, okay, what if I just shoot you with my main guns? Yeah, how's that for salvaging? Okay, well I've got a staggering two chips. I'm assuming each of these have five. Yeah, there we go. So I reckon we need to find each of these, scan them, blow them up, and then we'll all be much happier. Of course, that also means I have to find them. All the while my ship is exploding due to all the acidic fog, but don't worry about that. Worrying is for lesser people. Finding your way around this place is far from trivial. Ancient research probe? Something that really stopped me just chucking this game away so quickly is just how much it gives you freedom from the get-go. You can do what you want right from the start. Ancient log. Ah, okay, looks like we also need to be doing that. Okay, better keep my wits about me then. This all looks like it's glowing to show me where to go. Oh, that's right. Our inertia is affected inside this particular rift. Different rifts have different effects. The acidic fog, I think, is the worst one. Or maybe the one that stops your shields from recharging. That's pretty grimbo as well. Yeah, maybe it's just all pretty bad. <laughs> okay, okay. This is bringing us over to another monolith. Limited adventuring and max auto turrets ruin the base game for me. I can't play without them now. Uh, yes. I don't play without them either. Why would I? They're just so nice. Just denying you horrible pain. I have heard, a couple of people now have told me, that the auto turrets are weaker than regular turrets. I have not tested that yet, but I did see some old forum posts from maybe four or so years ago. Uh, complaining about the fact that auto turrets are weaker than regular turrets. I would like to test that at some point. Seems a little unfair to make your auto turrets weaker. But I'm sure someone's thinking about... Hold on, research probe. I need to check you out. Give me your data. I think I... Maybe I just took that. Looks like it got slammed into after all. Ivana's is busy fighting. I think Ivana's invincible, given that she's sitting there with very small hull, but it's also completely undamaged. Isn't this game and its love for unkillable NPCs? I'm certainly not unkillable. This looks like it's guiding us off to somewhere else. Let's go check it out. Even so, once you spam so many turrets, the overkill makes that irrelevant. Uh, there is that. But we had to work for all of this firepower. It wasn't just handed to us on a silver platter. There's some more expedition wreckage to <clears throat> salvage mine free. More like mine salvage free. What is that? Just wreckage. I really do think you can make a killing in the rifts early game if you decide to do it, but I've never cared for the rift missions in general, so it's nothing I've looked into. But I do reckon if you're starting out early on in the game and you locate where there is a rift research center, there's nothing stopping you um, profiteering greatly off of these places. Come get some.
Oh, I brought one of the Rift Captain guys. He's gonna not be best pleased. So because I've got a Zotan Hunter as my captain, he summons one of the Zotan uh, mini-bosses of the Rifts. With some nice cringy dialogue to go with it. Okay, nice salvaging job there, guys. It's just because I forgot my companion mod, let's just ram into cargo to pick it up. Base game is ridiculous. Look at that, he's right there, and I had to touch it with my nose to pick it up. Okay, there's still four more wreckages, and oh, hello. Quantum Cruiser. There's the scumbag. Now it's all or nothing. Let's strike it down together. Oh, man. This game needs fewer people in it, not more. Alright. Honestly, doing these story missions with these guys summoned with Yavanna is... Powerful. You've got this unkillable, fairly strong for the region NPC doing all the work for you. Very nice. <laughs> well, this is a bit of a problem because I don't know where I killed it, but it actually has a drop that I do want because the the mini-boss thing that you summon by having a Zotan Hunter as your captain actually drops rare rift loot, in particular the rift subsystems, which you normally have to pay quite a lot for. So this could be considered a shortcut to getting it. Let's see if you have one over here. Again, we have to fly right into the goods to pick them up. Some of them sitting right there and I can't have it. It was a combat, I guess. I do rather like the combat, I guess. Otherwise, I'm still on the hunt for the expedition pieces, wherever they are. Yeah, fighters in the base game would go out and pick them up. That much is true, but they are so slow. Fighters actually have a hard capped speed and range, I believe. Eh, maybe the speed isn't hard capped. The range certainly is three and a half kilometers. They're just so painful to wait on. Tell you what else is painful, navigating here. What am I even looking for? Not that, that's just a boy. That is also just a boy. That seems about right, that expedition wreckage, assuming I haven't already investigated it. Could you please show me the guns that you have to fire manually? Are they guided missiles or something? Haha. <laughs> it is the single strongest weapon I've ever seen in the game. It is this. The Bursting Coaxial Biorocket Phalanx D... Uh, TDX. So this is a custom gun that I created in a turret factory. It has 50,000 Omicron. It has a very good range of 50 kilometers. It uh, takes quite a few shots to overheat, and even when it does overheat, it's uh, three and a half seconds later is able to fire again. And yes, the guided missiles are what make it. I never bother with a rocket launcher that doesn't do guided missiles, because otherwise enemies just move slightly to the side and avoid them. One improvement that you could have over this weapon is making it antimatter rockets. Those would deal an eye-watering triple damage to the hull. But the reason I don't use antimatter on my rockets is because on insane mode, some enemies are immune to antimatter damage. And that. Did that blow off one of my guns? I think it blew off one of my guns. Cool. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm imagining that, but it felt like it did. So, yeah, it. Uh, Assuming it hits the target, it has trouble doing that when they're close by. It does just look at things and delete them. Even the end boss. Yeah, I have a mod that shows more information on turrets. The cooldown, the effective DPS, the damage against shields versus hull. 
And I forget the name of the mod, but I suppose we could check it, couldn't we? It is... Detailed Turrets Tooltips. Hey, we can even have a look at it here, can't we? There we go. Wow, that's an old looking thing there, but yes. Gives you much more information on the weapons that you're using. I far prefer that over what you get in the vanilla experience in game. This seems promising. There are not one but two wreckages here. Uh, not two but four wreckages here, which is indeed all of the wreckage I need. Very good. Let's get them scanned. And whilst my rockets go and do their work. Yes, I so often forget I do actually need to destroy you. Let's carefully use our salvage weapons. That's the stuff. And then go and thankful, thanklessly ram this thing just to pick those goods up. Wish I could just blow them up without scanning them, but I think you need to scan so that the game can spawn some Zotan, as if to say you're not getting that without a fight. Yeah, yeah, okay. Easy money though. My rockets are happy to oblige. What do you mean we're showing them, Yavanna? You're like a monster hunter handler. We did it, pard. But I've been using that uh, turret information mod since I started this run. That didn't creep in unannounced. Especially when I was checking out some screenshots of the game People were showing off their turrets, and I was I was very interested because it showed effective DPS versus hull and shields, and that's a very important distinction to make. You might have noticed I went out of my way to get some plasma weapons, specifically for my fighters, because I needed something that would melt shields to get through the impenetrable shields that some enemies have against antimatter damage in this thing is ridiculous. The sad thing is there are, there are no great mountains left to climb. It'd be nice if there was something meaningful that I could need all this firepower for. But this is a game that kind of struggles to present a challenge once you're strong enough. Take Caffrey, for example. He has, uh, what, a billion shield and a billion hull. Even the strongest of enemies would take forever chewing through all of that, not to mention the shield is impenetrable. Should have sent Kafra to go and fight that railgun that one-shotted Malcontent. But you live and learn. quickly cycling between activating my coaxials and my non-coaxials. The non-coaxials I actually have set to only fire on my command so that I can actually destroy these and extract the data <laughs> with my salvaging mines. I could even dock the whole thing if I brought a big enough ship, which was disallowed. I could bring all this out of the rift safely. I actually wonder about that I'm not going to bother checking it out. Actually, it's not unthinkable that I could. I'm curious if you can dock some of the uh, stuff that you find in the rift. 
Mm, it's optional to collect more data, so it's not worth doing. What I need to do is find another rift. Which means I can have my beloved guns set back on, and we need to find another probe. Did I say rift? So I meant probe. How hard could they be to find? They glow green, just like a lot of the pickups around here. Holy moly, what shattered into loads of pieces here? I'm, I'm having that, whatever that was. Uh, where is it? Ah, there we go. Hmm, that's strange. This must have been a Zotan. And it shattered into a lot of goodies, kind of like how a pirate goodies ship would. You get pirate transport ships that try to escape, but they take about a minute to make their escape, so you use that time to go and steal all their stuff. I've never seen a Zotan have that kind of goodies. Maybe it's only something that happens in the rifts. As I said before, I haven't played a lot of rifts, because I've played a few and decided I didn't like them. So it could be there are still some secrets that this game hides from me inside these rifts. Certainly some excellent drops. I think I really underestimated how much value you can get out of the rifts. So maybe somebody who's particularly more clever than me could figure out a much better early game setup to get a lot of strength by doing the rifts. Of course, on the other hand, I am all about rushing that trinium. Because if you're going to rush now, knight, you might as well rush trinium, and you want to rush now, knight, for shields. Is it that? No, that's a repair platform. It is hell on high water to navigate this place. I'm still on the lookout for an ancient research probe. Boy, that was small. I hope I haven't already investigated it, because it's a bit of a trek to get to. Do you know if rift enemies scale with their sector location? I am under the impression that rift enemies scale with the difficulty of the rift. And the difficulty of the rift that you can select scales with the tech area that you take the mission in. I don't know what level this mission is. I don't think it says here either. But this is these are the storyline missions, so they're probably very easy. They all have been so far. I don't think this mission scaled with the area that we did it in. Alright, let's try to remember that... Whoa, hey, a Zotan fighter! Cool. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, what a horrible noise! <laughs> Huzzah! We've done all the things. Also, for some reason, these probes are part of the Commonwealth of Skadi, so I can't touch them really. Now, what I'm really interested in is can you steal something from the rift and take it back? I want to find out. I'm going to dock this expedition wreckage, if I can. Riddle me why I couldn't. Come on, don't be scared. Let us anschluss. Okay, right, there we go, there we go. I am now stealing part of the rift. But just in case it treats different things differently, let's also steal some rift asteroid. Cue me crashing my game and uh, glitching out my save so that it can never be loaded again. Alright, alright, here we go. Got an asteroid right next to us. 
Well, let's just position ourselves. Asteroids are heavy. This won't be trivial to take, but never expected it to be. So level one is the same as iron in Zanian? Uh, you'd have to check, because I am not personally sure. Right, so we have now... It's very difficult to move, but we've stolen an asteroid and a... Uh, mission critical piece of wreckage. Now if we ripcord and return home, do we keep them? That immediately looked like a no. Oh, boo, looks like you're on dock on ripcording. You've earned your payment. What exactly was my payment? 30 data! Oh no, that's, that's what it took away from me. Here's my payment. Mm, I'm a big fan of that courier controller, a uh, carrier controller rather, but two rares just cannot match up to an exceptional, so gib. That was great, huh? if you thought so, Yavanna. I wouldn't have thought that those ancient recordings could be decoded that well. Old technologies do surprise you, isn't it? Refresh, blah, 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 blah. Take these parts directly to Zack. See you again. So the game is trying to tell me how much fun we're having. That's, that's not how it works. I will decide how much fun we're having. Question is, where is Mr. Uberstein? The answer is he's not here, but maybe he's over there. I'm going to check that, but only after I check the Rift Research Center to see if he's got anything goody, uh, good in the shop. I always like my Hardening Revive and Bulwarks, but only if it were exotic tier. Hope. How much positive energy? Junk. Future. Da 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 da. Yeah, okay. I don't care. New knowledge. That last expedition you've outdone yourself. With this old knowledge, I can find out so much about the Zotan. These findings give me the tools to research more, quicker, scientists, knowledge combined, further improved, sincerely, Zack. Okay, great. I'm sure you're very happy, Zack, but I will be happier when I'm done with these missions. Generally speaking, he's always given me new missions after doing a jump, so let's jump. Bye, malcontent. Oh wait, did I pick up any garbage? Not really. I've been watching all your State of Decay videos. Big fan, says Seaglow. Well, cheers. I do love State of Decay 2. I wish I had a reason to go back and play more of it. I'm currently just holding my breath, waiting for State of Decay 3. Like so many others. Oh, I love the sound of this last part. Much has happened lately. My research is almost completed. Unfortunately, I had to realize that normal materials can't withstand high energies. I need a material that can withstand it. We can find it in the rifts. I have again left you a disguised mission at the Rift Research Center to find the material. It's officially a rare minerals, everything else, blah blah blah. Okay. So, so, so. Hey, he must be talking about that guy we, we fought earlier. A weapon of mass destruction that can instantly pulverize any ship. Yeah. That was IHDTX, I think was its name, or something similar to that. Painful. Very painful to watch my flagship get blown up in one shot. Right, so... Ugh, I'm not a big fan of the Energizing Reviving Guardian. This is it. Rift Depth 21, apparently. Commissioned by Professor von Uberstein. Again, quite a low kiloton mass allowance. 21 distortion shockwaves. They get unstable. Approach with caution. I'm sure I will. Ions. Yeah, shields are not able to regenerate. Low energy plasma. Energy weapons decrease. That's okay, we don't use energy. We use physical rockets. I'm looking for highly energy proof materials. They're very rare. You can use a detector subsystem. Get 100 of these materials. The question is, do I need to mine those out or not? It's a question we better get the answer to. So I'm going to go over to the equipment dock and make sure that I'm flexible for this mission. Ah, oh, don't get me thinking about State of Decay 2. It's actually very difficult to go apart my my day-to-day -day life and not just come back and play some more of it. But the problem is the game is defeated. I've done every map on the hardest difficulty settings. I've done dead... What was it called again? Dead something? 
Dark side, yeah, I did Dark Side, I did No Man's Land. Just I, I need I need more. Righty tighty, what am I looking at here? I'm looking at a ship that I don't think needs 20 million shields. I'm going to pull out the energy to shield converter to ditch that down to still says 20 million, but the true number is 7 million shields. Uh, I'm not sure I like that. Do I have any legendary ones? I got one legendary one. Hmm. I think I can still live with that, but what I'm going to put in is the arbitrary plus eight. Unless I have better arbitrary. I got seven. I'll take eight, thanks. There we go. That means that if I do need to switch out for mining lasers or salvage lasers, I have the ability to. But I can always go crawling back to just hardcore firepower. Good. We'll get the ripcord again, which is the easiest way to leave. Because it's very instant, it's much better than summoning a wormhole after protecting your own floaty little thing for, well, for far too long. Where's Yavanna? Okay, maybe Yavanna doesn't want to join in here. Truly a solved game. Oh, well, that's the thing, I want to add some more difficulty so it's significantly less solved, but it's not a very fun game to mod. I looked into the modding for State of Decay 2, it was just horrendous. And of course, every update breaks all the mods too, so a lot of people are not keen on making mods for it. In particular, the gifted Neru behind the Dark Side mod. Just constantly has it broken. I had no problem sending Neru some PayPal money as a thanks for making that mod. I appreciate it. it's a lot of work. Sometimes money just isn't enough. Right, let's go. You do not have enough free cargo space. Wow, you must want me to grab quite a bit then. All right, put on this trinium cargo bay. All right, well, I'll tell you what. If that is such an issue, how many how many slots am I allowed on this thing? Not slots, but mass. Ooh, I do not have a lot of space for more mass. Let's just cargo bay it up a bit more. Now, this stuff is quite a bit lighter than I thought, which is good. And here I thought that a cargo bay would be very heavy. Right, I'm sure we've all loved seeing our undercarriage. Whilst all these slots only show 162 cargo hold, what we can do is we can merge them together. And then end up with 992 cargo hold. And I actually thought I'd run out of crew for that, but no, we're, all, we're on top of the situation. Danger, insufficient protection, there's 21 rift distortion. Uh, I don't care. Although losing this ship would be very sad, because I'd lose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 legendary subsystems. And the others that aren't legendary are shield to generators, which are one of the most coveted subsystems. Interesting, I think you saw a frozen image of us warping away when in fact it was giving me the loading screen. What's that blonk? A group of alien ships have warped in. Okay. So find asteroids that contain rare minerals and mine out 150 of them, but also collect the high energy proof materials. Okay. Is it those? Now I'm really going to regret not having my loot pickup extender thing. Well that's something. I have a feeling that was not the stuff I was looking for. It was probably the shockwave anomalies. Yeah. Yeah, probably exactly those. 
that is more likely what I'm after. Rare mineral asteroid. And what I severely need to do then is equip myself with... Here we go, my R Demolisher Miners. I don't have enough space for all of them, so I'm actually going to tear off a... Mm, what can I tear off? Sorry, one of my cool looking rail guns, unless there's something else I could take off. That's size 5, that's size 5, yeah, we've got to remove one of my beloved rail guns, and then shove on a pair of R Demolishers. Assign them to number three. I guess I could make them automatic. Then realize that I don't have enough crew for this. It's okay, we can just have fewer people repairing my ship. Alright, how's that then? Yeah, the auto guns are just firing into the monolith. Okay. Cargo Bay is not assigned to pick up this stuff. Let's make sure it does. Is this actually doing anything? Well, it says I'm picking up rare minerals, so I'll believe it. Like so much of what I have, these uh, mining lasers are custom made and absurdly powerful. Alright, this is getting out of hand. You have got to go. You... Haha, <laughs> a dashing hunter and dash your way out of that. There we go. Now if I can just enjoy a moment of peace and quiet. In which you're all dead and I'm very alive. And I can get back to mining this in peace. I quit, think you equipped salvaging lasers. That sounds right. Yeah, look at that. Our salvaging. Completely wrong. That explains the low damage output. It's the excavator mine that I need, in fact. Well spotted. And there we go. Just minced into dust. Now let's go and find some more of those rare materials. It was interesting though that the salvaging lasers were able to get me some of that. Wouldn't have expected it. Something shiny over there. Some sort of strange crystal formation. Hmm. Perhaps that's the energy proof materials that von Uberstein is after. Why is my... Why, why is there a lot of green gas coming out of my mining lasers? What could it mean? Oh, these, uh, these guys are not going to be best pleased with me, are they? Well, ain't my problem. Get out of here. Energy resistant, huh? Am I going to get this, or am I going to need to blow these up the old-fashioned way? Perhaps that's the, the hint there. They're energy resistant. So, of course, I'm not going to pick them up this way. What I obviously need to do is take them out the more manly way. Guns, focus fire. Oh yeah, there we go, surely. Yeah, that's the stuff. Don't bother mining laser these things then. Very easy to miss some, it seems. Okay, okay. So that's what we need. That's the real mission here. Note that my shields are not recharging because of the rift anomalies. My cargo bay is rapidly filling up Ugh, with iron ore. Get out! 
get away from me. I want advantage to not using the loot and <clears throat> pick up range thinger is that when I just ditch some items they're not going to come flying back to me. actually seeing a very big advantage to using point defense lasers over point defense cannons and that's that it very easily tells me where my enemies are. If I've got those lights coming out of my ship aiming towards something that's telling me beware the lord of the land approaches. Take care of it. Okay pulsar or no pulsar I need these for the actual mission. If I ever do another run of Avorion, it's going to be so painful going crawling back to uh, regular weapons and not our custom-made ones. Not that they're modded in, I mean custom-made as in done in the turret factory. Although, you could always just find another turret factory and make more, it's just these are unbelievably powerful endgame weapons. What's that? A radiating asteroid. Uh, that seems like a bad thing to be going towards. There's a lot of bad things around here, it seems. Pretty sure that irradiating asteroid just did some proper uh, hull damage to me could be grateful for the fact that this is right here. This is our protection platform. Always possible to retreat towards it, and then it will shield you from the ill effects. Ah, and then I'll be able to, hopefully, get a bit of hull back, get my shields back, and also use this moment to chart where exactly I'm going. We've barely made any progress here. Where are the rocks that I'm looking for? Looks like we've already picked that particular place dry, is what I would say. If that weren't there, we can head up there for a crystal formation. And that appears to be en route to finding another monolith. Oh! Well, so much for our little rest here. The big cheese has arrived. And he's managed to distract me from where I found... There it is. These point defense lasers are no slouches either. They've got three times the DPS per slot of the starting chain guns you get in this game, perhaps even more. I know that's not a whole lot, but if your defense lasers aren't actively defending you from something, they will actually just go and attack the closest enemy, which is lovely. of picking things up without the limited adventuring companion. There we go. I believe I was noticing where else to go from here, and I also believe I've forgotten. I've also killed my pursuer without realizing, so I don't know which of these drops are the ones that I want. I'm just going to beeline for the exotic ones, because exotics are about the only one that matters, unless somehow there's a legendary drop. And it was actually a really good one. Combat carrier. I like that one a lot. It's a little exotic over there, though. But 
it was not my plan to be doing any streaming today. I had some real world chores to take care of, but those ones got taken care of nice and easy, so I figured let's work our way through more of the Avorion, the Asnorion, the Aborion, the Schedule No Morion, and so on and so forth. Content should have been used for the areas that were beyond the barrier in the game because it stands things beyond the barrier aren't really any different to pre-barrier and it's a little jarring how no one in the game's lore seems to care about it you can have an empire split by the barrier and it doesn't actually change anything did you consider trying Eve so I have taken it in good advice not to touch Eve because if I ever played Eve, it would probably be the end of my everything. I suspect I would get sucked into that game, and then that's all I would ever do for a very long time. It doesn't seem healthy. Where, oh, where are the anything over here? I'm not seeing any of those energy rocky things. I'm not seeing any over here either, and you'd think the monoliths would be markers of such things. Ah, well there's some more of those rocks that I do need. I suppose that's a good enough reason to go, since that needs to be done for the mission as well. <laughs> Save it for retirement. I suppose in a way I am retired. What was that? Oh, I think that was one of those other... Ooh, okay, it's all part of my pirouetting scheme. It's been five years now since I quit my job. Paradox is good to me. Perhaps I wasn't good enough back. Be careful, the Zotac can track you in open space. Get back to a safe area around asteroids and boys. Never really noticed there being a significant issue with going away from the boys and asteroids. Jake retiring, a grim prospect indeed. I'm not sure I'd ever stop streaming. It's just too much fun, why would I stop? Alright, if the Zotan could kindly leave me alone for a little bit. You just auto fire and everything while I take this out. I'm not sure these rare materials are anywhere near as rare as advertised. It's situations like this that really make me love the auto turrets. I don't have the twitch reactions to even want to be trying to handle all these uh, all these things around me, especially in 3D space. And you know what? Even if auto turrets are a little weaker. Maybe it's not too bad to have a laziness tax. When I play Roller Coaster Tycoon, for example, I have a mod installed that automatically prices uh, rides and stalls because there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of calculations involved for the optimum price of things. And if you go out of your way to figure it out, then you're going to make a lot more money. And of course, it's completely calculable. Sit down with a calculator, you can just figure it out. Uh, obviously I don't want to stop and do that. I want to be busy building my theme park, but I also don't want to be missing out. So I use a mod that automatically prices them, but the mod has a laziness tax where it will price optimally, but then it'll, be, uh, it'll reduce it by a set percentage. Just as a way of saying, I'm too lazy, so I will pay my tax for this. 
And I think I always set that to 10 or 20 percent. It's a difficult game to play optimally, Roller Coaster Tycoon, because there's very little incentive to do so. It's a sandbox. Just make pretty parks with awesome roller coasters. That's how I get my jollies. I'm telling Marcel! <laughs> Don't watch Marcel so much these days, I feel he just does clickbaity videos rather than uh, interesting videos. I loved his ride overviews and things, but now it's just like, I can beat this park in zero moves or with four things, find out how. Uh, it's a real turn off for watching something. But, not to discredit the awesome stuff he's already made. What is that? It's not my problem, is what it is. So awesome roller coaster, says the man making 12 little corkscrews. Yeah, those optimal little corkscrews are a great way to strip a lot of fun out of the game. I'm not saying I've never done that. Sometimes you just need the money. I was young and needed the money. Is that a legendary drop? No, it's a deceptively colored boy. Poor ship exploding from the acid fog here. At least the guns still seem to be attached. That's why I keep my guns, generally speaking, on turret bases. Turret bases have a nice bonus to not just blowing up. Armoured turret bases are even better for that, however. A Vorion material is the best at many things, but it is not something that you can get armour out of. If you want the best armour, use Organite. If you want the best armour that's still very mobile, use Trinium. And that's the sad late game truth about your ships. You only use three materials, Organite, Trinium, and Avorion. Avorion is the best for just about every, um, every block that does something. Technical blocks, that's it. Organite is the strongest, and Trinium is the lightest. I feel like we've been in this rift forever now. Let's wrap it up, shall we, if I get these so-called rare ores. Hopefully that's the last of them. It is not. I need one more. And I still need another one of those energy retardant ores to go and grab. The crystal rocks or what have you. But where are they? I'm looking for another orange glowy place to get my rocks. That's a good sign. It's not a good sign, it's a hundred kilometers away. That's alright, we've got a spaceship. We'll be there in no time. Just having a look around in case I was missing something else. Let's go for it. Avorion never seems to end, says Rombi. I know, I know. Don't worry, we are currently doing the penultimate milestone once we finish this rift mission stuff. And the, the, the guy did promisingly say that we're coming towards the end of it. I don't know how true that is, but I want to believe. Von Uberstein and his... I don't even know what we're working towards here. His mad sa I shouldn't have changed my... Shouldn't have changed what I was aiming at. Now I don't know where the fancy rocks are anymore. I think we're still in this direction though. Let's actually use our eyes. Okay, activated a defense platform. I see them. Yeah, oh boy, that's not all I see. You guys all get out of here. Easy money. Yeah, 
Yeah, Roller Coaster Tycoon's another game I'd love to see others play, but nobody really does it. Euristo used to do it back in the day when Euristocrat, aka True Leveler, aka Jeremy Corbin, used to stream. But sadly, those days. Well, I suppose they come and they go. Right, the swarm is arriving in 10 minutes. As nice as that gold or iron ore might sound, I don't need it. I'm still on the lookout for more of that weird material. Does that look like some? No, it's just drops. I'm not looking for droppings here. I am looking for energy crystals. Eyes peeled, everyone. Aha! by player and blowing this up. I have 66. I apparently need 100 for the esteemed von Uberstein. What kind of name is that? I mean, the von Uber sounds very Germanic. The Stein sounds very Hebrew. Suppose we're in space now, it could be anything. For all we know, that's in this grim, dark future, that's what the entire world has just turned into. It's not like Firefly, where everything's crossbreeding uh, Chinese and American. This one's Hebrews and Germans. Hmm. Still looking for those fancy glowing rocks. Thought I spotted one there. No, it's just a boy. Wasn't I meant to equip one of my object finders to help find these? Yeah, I, I recall even uh, talking about how I should be doing that. And then I ended up not doing it, of course. Oh yeah, yeah, we're still waiting on the end of Euristo's Legacy Sims run. That is not fancy rock, that is titanium. Yeah, this is what I get for ignoring the game's valuable advice. That's just a boy. We're just a girl. Looking for a heartbeat in the night. I am actually low on time here because if the swarm comes in, I'm not going to have the liberty to just sit around and comb over the areas looking for these fancy rocks. I am just sitting here regretting my choices. And I really don't want to rip out one of my systems. I could do that. I could rip out a system irreversibly, destroy the system, but... Uh, end up with a slot that I could use for object detection. I don't want to do that. This game punishes you pretty hard for not permanently installing your subsystems and it punishes you for doing it as well. Hello? Strange looking crystal formation. 75 kilometers away, let's go. Does that bring Nancy Drew to mind? No, because Nancy Drew's never really romance-oriented. I think that's because she's a bit of an OG woman who don't need no man. She's strong, independent. Ignore the fact that she is going about on her, her lawyer daddy's fat wallet. Or that she's got her perma-simping Ned Nickerson at her beck and call. And boiling it down, Nancy Drew is a terrible role model. But she was actually named as one of Hillary Clinton's role models. Alright, there we go. Finally got all the doodads from this place. Let's pull that cord and get out of here. Unless I really, really want that exceptional drop. You know, I'm curious enough to blast myself over to it. If I weren't in the post-game, 
There's no way I'd be leaving all of these drops unattended to. Exceptionals in particular. Mm. Couldn't say no to them. I think that's the that's just a purple boy, that's not a legendary drop. Yeah, how deceptive. How weird as well, there's also no other purple boys. Am I being bamboozled here? Oh, it wasn't a subsystem, it was a point defense. Right, out we go. Ma uh, Nancy may not need no man, but she does need your keys, your wallet, your diary, the skeletons, your closet, etc. Alright, here's your payment, thank you. Where's my payment? What's my payment? Hyperspace jump range of plus three. No hyperspace cooldown, but it could be liquidated into something that does give me that. And then hopefully an email from Uberstein saying thank you for your incredible, if implausible, amount of help. Ah, there we go, you found them. I can complete this. What a triumph. I have all the parts for my one-of-a-kind invention. What does it do? Unprecedented breakthrough. An apparatus that can enclose the Zotan in the rift so they cannot leave them. All we have to do is deal with the Zotan already outside of the rifts. We'll get rid of the Zotan forever. I just need to install it. Then... <laughs> We're just doing one last run. Alright, thanks, Dutch. One last mission and we're clear, right? Uh, do I have to do this inside of a rift? Probably, this whole storyline's about rifts. Has to stay between us, though. There shouldn't be any witnesses before the big reveal. Alright, so how do we think this is going to be mucked up? Wait for Zack to contact you. Okay, well, how about I also repair a few busted parts of my ship. I'll keep the cargo bay in case that's needed again in the near future. Heck, I'll keep everything on for now. And then we'll do our jump, because that's usually what causes what's-his-face to want to contact me. It's weird having such a low jump range. Just like that. It is done. Also, let's get rid of last steps. I have everything I need. Now I need to put it all together. It'll be perfect. Other researchers will bow. The name Zach von Uberstein will be spoken. Oh, never again will it be spoken without the deepest of respects. Okay, well, good for you. Eureka, the time has finally come. Yeah, didn't we just cover this? All that's missing is a test run. Meet me in Sector 91-227. Witness the glorious moment. Come alone. Do not tell anyone. I want it to remain secret until I can be sure that everything is working properly. No witnesses in the case of something bad happening. Alright, alright. You know, this is, is this actually going to have any effect on the game whatsoever? Or is it all just going to be hoodwinked at the end? I am more than a little curious. Also, these two blocks didn't merge. Foolish. Foolish. Let me grab the color off of you, apply it to you, and then I can merge you. Just grab a bit of extra blocky capacity. And then Zach is over in 91. Uh, 91 negative 227. So he is quite close, surely. Oh, yeah, he's right there. How convenient, all right. That's only... Yeah, no matter how you cut it, it's three jumps for this ship. All right, let's go then. I don't have any hyperspace cooldown stuff equipped, so jumping into empty places to speed up the cooldown. Actually, why even do that? I can just manually do this to cool down. like I'm at the start of the game again. <laughs> Come alone at night, bring duct tape and some plastic and all my valuables while I'm at it. Where's my jump route? Okay. 
Period. Alright, there's Zach. There's Yavana. Go to Zach and talk to him. I don't like the way this is going. This is all sounding very suspicious. And there's his device. Hmm. Glad you could make it. You're about to witness it. You should get your deserved rewards. So-called scientists too blind. Those are, of course, there's a problem. This is my invention and only my invention. I will not share my fame with two cheap stooges. You are no longer... Uh, okay, goodbye. Wait, is he... Is he brought in friends as well? The Cavaliers. Okay, okay. Oh, he's got uh, hand wavy him all over him. Okay, he ended up being immune to my damage. Which was the only way he was ever going to survive my damage. And... He appears to be summoning lots and lots of Zotan. Well, in a way, this is good. You line them up, I'll knock them down. Zack, what have you done? You know what, in case this goes a little hairy, uh, Malcontent, would you mind coming over here? I'm not saying I can't deal with all of this. Just not sure if I want to. Malcontent has arrived on the scene. Malcontent, if you please, attack every enemy in the sector. It shouldn't be possible. I don't know what happened. The Cavaliers must have damaged the device. It opened a wormhole. Close it. Better destroy the cursed device as soon as possible. No, 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 no. Alright, alright, so we need to go through the wormhole and destroy whatever... Uh, why me? <laughs> okay. Uh, might as well bring in the big guns for it. Malcontent, I want you to escort me. Yes, curse this sudden but inevitable betrayal. That was funny, the escorting ship actually went through the wormhole. I'm not sure it was meant to do that. I'm just glad I'm not doing these rift things anyway. Oh, we're inside a rift, aren't we? Hmm. Rift pentagram? What exactly do you want me to do? Defeat the Rift Guardian. Okay. Who is the Rift Guardian? There's the Rift Guardian. Let's go and say hello. Is Malcontent still following me? Looks like it. Uh, this place appears to be breaking my ship apart a little bit. I hope the Malcontent doesn't get destroyed in here as well. That would be less than fun for me. Go, malcontent and friends, go! Although I hadn't considered what if the rift effects damage my fighters as well. That'd be awful. Just all of the fighters dying in here. Each one of those fighters costs 100,000 of Orion. And I believe at this point we have a billion of Orion. Billion with a B. So it's not the world's worst outcome. But it's not desirable. Really hope this enemy doesn't have our friend the hand wavium. There have been far too many story mode enemies that just go, oh, you can't hurt me because. Uh... Oh, yeah, there we go. Completely invulnerable. So I probably need to destroy these sustainer devices first.
face Satan is not bound by our earthly laws. I shudder to think of its powers. Uh, that's okay. We are annihilating space Satan here whilst Malcontent deals with the riffraff. And parts just snap off of my ship here. That should be enough of a volley to take that thing out. Although it says immune, immune, immune. I, I, excuse me. It's freaking game, man. They need to be taken out in some kind of order. That's why Swox is so great. He's a boss that actually fights you with integrity. He knew, he uses no hand wavium, and he gives you one of the best systems. Yeah. In general, the the base game bosses are fine. They don't have any hand wavium going on. Oh boy, you just unleashed a whole load of. Okay, well that is exactly why I use point defense. Are you willing to die yet? No, you are still immune. What do you want me to do? Ram you? Okay, well, it seems the moment the fighters get involved, it doesn't matter. That is quite funny. And all of that just flows into malcontent, including <laughs> of all the legendary subsystems to get the cargo capacity one. Okay, can we can we leave here? This has not been fun for many people, especially not me. Oh, Mord Sith coming in to ask the real question. Oh, I think Malcontent's interrupting the animation here. Alright, you did it. Yes, I did. The wormhole's been closed. Zack's device. Destroy the thing. No, you can't destroy it. It will release lots of energy. Then you'd have to... Then you would have destroyed the only sure way to close it again. Gigantic gateway. You've doomed us all. Your dear colleagues at the Rift Research Center will be happy, happy to get their hands on it. We can hand over you, blah, blah, blah. Why did Zack just suddenly turn evil? We were all working together so nicely, and he went, ah, no. I must be evil. Oh, he's going to destroy his own creation, I see. Right, Zack, time to die. Just face it, buddy. Oh, okay, now he's still got hand wavium. Okay, okay. Like I say, it reminds me a lot of my little Lego man I used to play with when I was a wee kid. Mr. Invincible, I called him. He was immune to all damage. Alright, alright. I need to finish my research. You can't just hand over all the progress. Let me go. If he wanted to kill us, who knows what he'll mess up. Oh, can I really trust Yavanna as well, though? We've achieved so much, you can't throw it all away. Uh, uh, where's take nobody's side? Anyway, Zack needs to die. I'll be waiting for you, Zack, blah, 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 blah. Still indestructible. You got anything to say for yourself, Yavanna? Aside from the fact that you are severely damaged as well. Is that how the Rift's been treating you? Any solid ways to deal with them, or is it just rubbish all the way down? I really don't rate these Rift missions at all. But the Rift rewards are the best in slot, hands down. Case in point, look at my flagship. 
here are the subsystems, and this is a rift, bo uh, rift reward, so is this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the 15 slots. Maybe more if I miscounted. So, there are two ways to enjoy the content from the DLC in my eyes. One is to blow up the Rift Research Centers and steal their research. Another is, to, is if you have more money than sense, to send out a merchant to go and buy some. In fact, what I did to amass the Rift data that I have now, after I got more money than I knew what to do with, is I went to good old Merchant 1 and I told him to procure, doesn't really matter where he does it, Rift Research data, which is way at the bottom, because you can't normally get it, but if you pay extra, you can. And then I tell you to do something stupid, like get me a hundred thousand of it. And yeah, it costs a billion credits, and yeah, it'll take a day. But if you give it enough escorts, then you can at least get rid of the chance of being ambushed during it. Look at that, only 1% chance. And if it's below 4, it's 0 and they just pay your way for Rift Research data. Anyway, I never need to do that again. Let's go and fly to the Rift Research Center at 83 to something something. Well, that's right over there. Um, all right, I guess. Malcontent, you don't need to follow me. You, you know how to do this yourself. seem to have broken something on the screen. There we go. Malcontent, just go over there. In short, you didn't engage with the rifts unless a story mission. I've done some rifts, and I've done some off-screen as well in uh, regular playthrough, and I don't think they're very good. They're not very enjoyable. It is kind of cool how they make you work within limitations, because you have to build a, a ship of a certain size going in there. So you got to design ships specifically for the rifts, but I don't particularly enjoy doing that. I just want to make my big badass ships. And I just want those bonuses. And the story missions in the Into the Rifts, much like the Black Market story missions, are just terrible. I'm only doing them for the sake of completion. I wonder if, much like the Black Market thing, this is going to give you an opportunity to redo the missions. It's going to say something like, oh, oh well, it uh, doesn't matter what it says, we've gotten the uh, the milestone. The scientists know what to do with Zack and his device. I have to say goodbye. Collaboration only ever causes problems. All the best to you. All right, bye-bye. Oh, and it's giving us the credits again, and wow. Okay, this is actually a pretty big reward for doing the storyline missions, a legendary um, rift bonus. And whilst I don't like the Energizing Reviving Protector, I really like the Generator Energizer Combat one, because it gives energy, and it gives turret slots, and I think I used two of those on my flagship. Still though, let's... Uh, yeah, let's never do this again. Where is the equipment dock? There you are. So yeah, funnily enough, I recommend the DLC, but only for not engaging with the new Rift stuff. Blow the places up, steal their loot, and use that to get yourself the best in slot gear. That's what I recommend. Right, you have served me well, but I think it's time for you to go goodbye. Where's Malcontent? Malcontent, you get over here as well. There's always a risk of permanently losing these subsystems going into the rifts with you, but now we take them all back. We get rid of all of these very expensive guns that I invested on you. Not all guns, of course. There's point defense and mining lasers on you. All of which custom spec. And now, where's Malcontent? There you are. I'm going to 
relieve the captain of duty. Honorably discharged. Move over everybody, including the captain. And the whole ship just goes bye-bye. Safe mode off. Select the whole ship. And farewell. Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on. All those rare minerals. But I don't care about them. They're going to die with you. Dunk. And goodbye. We get back into the seat of Malcontent, who hopefully doesn't pick up cargo. Good. Ah, man. Good to have all the guns back. <laughs> Good to have our captain back. Uh, but funnily enough, we are over capacity. Four people. It's all right. We just airlock four people. Shoof. And then we're very happy. All right. With that, God, that was over. That was about an hour and a half to get that done, and that wasn't even all of it. We did some in the previous session, but there is only one milestone left to go. Now that we have the storyline quest done, all we have to do is connect two factories using the supply command. Easy, right? So easy. Let's get you out of my way. Increment this up to 83. And then consider perhaps the most mind-numbing task that we have to do. What I can thankfully do actually is <laughs> there it is. Uh, I could switch out something on my subsystems. Hmm. I have more shield than I need at half a billion, so I don't mind losing the shield thing. What I would like is the trader subsystem. I would use this because it's strictly better than the Ultratech trading subsystem. It's the same thing with other bonuses. And I gotta say that. 3.6 kilometer economic scan, uh, 3.6 kilometer docking distance is really nice. But I'm going to use this because I don't want to use any legendaries that I don't have multiple of. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started on that accelerators. We don't need to know about rifts anymore. I don't need to know about much of anything anymore. So, the last remaining thing on my list of things to do is to produce everything. Only 130 goods, so that's still quite a lot. But what I could do is I could just crap out a factory for each of them and call it a day. But I uh, perhaps short-sightedly said that I was going to build the Full Accelerator Factory Production Line. What is the Full Accelerator Production Line? Hopefully the browser is going to show up correctly here. Eh, there we go. In order to have one fully functioning accelerator factory, we need three fusion generators, three conductors, eight electromagnets, 28 energy tubes, fusion cores, gauge rails, high pressures, plasmas, power units, servos, steel, transformators, turbines, carbons, cattle. Yeah, we need freaking cattle. Chemicals, corns, oils, plastics. 34 steel factories. Gas collector, other gas collector, other other gas collector, scrap metal, solar power, water collecting, aluminium mining, coal mining, copper mining, noble metal mining, other noble metal mining, oil rigging, silicium? That can't be right, that must be silicon. And a single zinc mine. Dude, where's the kitchen sink factory? <laughs> And all this is needed to get one accelerator factor. I think that's over 200 different production facilities. It's kind of a scary number, isn't it? So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the stuff that is directly used in an accelerator in different areas and then move them over with a dedicated ship to get them over to the accelerator factory. So what do I mean by that? Perhaps it would be easier to look at an existing accelerator factory and go from there. Where are my accelerator factories anyway? How convenient, I've got one right here. So Malcontent, would you be so kind? You'll be there in two minutes, very good. What can we do in two minutes? Well I know something Chefrin can do in two minutes, and that is mercilessly curb stomp the end boss. Is there a factory factory? Yes, yes there is. It's just a shipyard, but shipyards build factories. Or rather, they build ships that are station founders, meaning they can be turned into factories. 
It's kind of funny seeing fighters pour out of Sheffrin's eyes. I did add a few more fighter docks just so the fighters could get deployed faster. The more fighter hangers you have, the quicker you can eject all of your fighters and have them in combat. Not that it's a big deal here, they just melt anything they look at, including the Wormhole Guardian. I was talking about it earlier, but I actually think, in terms of making perfect Hansas and games, Avorion, whilst it's been a very enjoyable game to play, doing the perfection stuff has not been particularly fulfilling like it is in other games, and I think that's because the economy in this game doesn't really simulate. It's there, and goods move around and get produced, but they don't do anything, they just exist. It's not like Patrician 4. We're bringing grain and cheese over to a, a, a city, feeds the population, stops them from starving, allows them to reproduce, or where you build, you bring building materials and new things get built, or you bring beer and then homeless people can actually come and join as burgers. Uh, in this game, goods just exist, and the only conceivable use for them is making guns. No amount of books or beer or servos that I drop on a sector makes any difference to anything. And that's where the game falls apart, at least for me in that respect, and I don't think the game really should focus on that. But it does leave me hungry. Once I'm done with this, I'm actually going to be actively seeking out another game to run, Perfect Hansa style. That poor end boss. When I think of all the firepower it took in the multiplayer to bring that thing down, and Cathre just looks at it and it melts. It does warm my cockles, but it gives me some strange things to think about. Why is it called Perfect Hansa? What's the origin of the term? Uh, I ran a game called Patrician 4, I was just talking about it in fact, and I did a perfect run of the game. Everything was done. Absolutely everything was done in the perfect setup. I maximized every single city in that game. And it was a long run, and a lot of people thought I'd lost my minds, but the real people who lost their minds were the people that watched it. Some people watched it multiple times. I would be surprised if it's not the first thing you see if you check YouTube for Perfect Hansa. There'll be Patrician 4 Perfect Hansa, 166 episode long playlist. Don't watch it. It's not there to be watched, it's there to be referenced. If one does not run Perfect Hansa, Perfect Hansa runs you. Okay, why did I come over here? Yes, because oh, I could take a look at this accelerator factory. So this is accelerator factory number one, the very first one I built. Uh, I actually moved it from where I built it over to here to test an idea that you sell more goods the deeper in towards the center you are. And I think that's largely true. It's more to do with the wealth of the faction that you're near, but in this case it seems to work just fine because this accelerator factory has made me 95 billion credits profit, barely edging out against accelerator factory 2, which has also made me billions of profit. And 3 and 4 are in the same sector as they kind of fight over the profit, but they still bring in the goodies. And then it's almost an order of magnitude ahead of drills and medical supplies, uh, which themselves still perform better than regular mines, but the mines perform better than other things. Nanobot factory appears to be... Uh, maybe it's just a question of time, but certainly in terms of investment, zinc mines are uncontested. The distillery is doing pathetic. The wood factory, the book factory, the glass factory, yeah. If, and there's the thing, there's no point in investing in any of these things other than for completionism. The only thing you really care about is making money and guns. And if you have the money, you just buy the materials for guns. Or you use your existing guns to rob people for materials to make more guns. That's why I mean the economy in this game is certainly there, but it's very unfulfilling. But what I was really here for was to look at Accelerator Factory Double XL number one. And that is because it gets these seven items, or rather seven different items in various quantities, and transforms them into these accelerators. For me, games are fun until the tipping point. I get pretty bored after it's clear, I have it beat. 
I think it's a different kind of fun to me after I have it beat. I do find a certain fun of organizing the chaos of a game into this sheer perfection. Hmm. Kind of like uh, European Versailles, for example. I get to the tipping point surprisingly fast in a lot of my campaigns, but I still go forward because there was just, just something about Montenegro culturally enriching the entire Soviet Union that still appealed to me long after I was an uncontested power, to give a relatively recent example of it. Now, Gauss rails, conductors, high pressure tubes, energy tubes, fusion reactors, plasma cells, and turbines. I think the safest thing I could do is write them all down. And I must have really been thinking about future Jake here, because I already wrote all these down. Did I get the numbers right, though? Uh, I'm not sure I can trust these numbers. What I want to know is, do any of these goods depend on each other? For example, do Gauss rails need conductors? Because my plan is to build each of these goods production lines in segregated areas, and then use a ship, or ships to do uh, supply runs between them. So, must have something else I need on this piece of paper. Mm. <laughs> there's, a, there's a list of where to find bounty mesh, uh, missions to boost up relations with other factions as fast as possible. And a list of every rift so, uh, subsystem slot. We've got all of those. Excellent. Okay, so needs turbines. It needs plasma cells. It needs fusion generators. Writing feels so strange since I spend all my time typing these days. Energy tubes. Fortunately, my handwriting has always been chicken scratch. High pressure tubes. And I'd be surprised if these tubes don't depend on each other in some way. Conductors. Always reminds me of that bad joke about the conductor who was sentenced to death. And a gauss rail. Conductor would... Um, would purposely run people over, and then he gets sent to the electric chair. And he's like, well, what do you want for your final meal? And he says, I'll have a, a blue banana, please. He's like, what? Okay, they feed him this blue banana, and he survives the electrocution. And then he just runs people over again, and he gets sentenced again, electrocuted again, eats his blue banana, and he's fine again. And he asks him, all right, what, what is the secret here? How is this blue banana stopping you from dying? And he says, ah, it's nothing to do with a banana. I'm just a bad conductor. I must have heard that joke decades ago, and I don't think it's very funny, but it's stuck in my head ever since. Okay, so the question is, which of these need any of those other goods to be made? Now, I don't want to accidentally have this sector blown up, so whilst we're waiting on this... Ooh, actually, is there a, an equipment dock? Or there is, okay, right. This equipment dock's going to do something I wish I'd known about at the start of this run, but I only found out about it yesterday. Equipment docks sell energy suppression satellites. And I am under the impression this prevents pirate attacks and it prevents the Zotan from warping in. So I am going to be using those in my factory setups so that I don't get distracted. Because it's nothing worse than setting up your factories, pirates or Zotan warp in and blow up your stuff while you're in the middle of all that. So let's be ready for that. But not right now. I want to check if any of these goods are needed by any other goods. So we're going to go to you. And what are we going to do? I think what I want to do is duplicate this tab several times. And I want to check each of these factories and see which, if any of them, need the other goods. So I need seven duplicates of this. I got four, five, six, seven. This uh, website is very dark because, like, like a sane person, I use a uh, a reader that makes it dark. God, that is such a flashbang. So let's not have that. My poor eyes. 
Okay, so first things first, if I were to make the turbine factory... So we reset all of this. Did that reset it on the other tab? Of course it didn't. If I want a turbine factory, add that in and fill its consumption. Turbines actually require plasma cells and conductors, it seems. Huh, well that's kind of bad. So maybe I should write here little arrows showing this. So turbine requires plasma cells and conductors, huh? Is conductors going to be high in demand? If the conductors don't rely on anything, that might be the first thing that I should make. All right. Now, if I were to make a plasma cell factory, plasma cell factory requires nothing else. So I could start by making my plasma cell factories. I apparently need nine plasma cell factories. Okay, okay. I'll make a note of that. Nine plasma cell factories. Because then what I can do is I can set up a supply chain to move the plasma cells over to the turbines, for example. I guess I'll underline this on my notes so that I know that that's an, an initial factory that I can use. Uh, what else was needed? We'll reset you and we'll look up fusion generators. Needs energy tubes. Mm. Don't that beat all. Fusion cores and... Oh, you also need plasma cell. There's another arrow coming out of plasma cells. This is getting complicated already. Power units, steel tubes, transformators. Oh, I have a feeling that's not the last time we're going to see steel tubes a necessity. Alright, alright. Ooh, I don't like the fact that this actually has additional steel tubes coming out. I might actually need to ferry some of those around. In German it was called Die Hanse. Even today it is a byname for certain cities along the coast. Die Hanstadt. In recognition of the trade pact that dominated its time and brought riches to its members. Like what the Medicis did, or later the East India Company. Yes, indeed. I mean, the, the reason I use the Hansa name is because of the game it all started with, Patrician IV, which was all about being a Hanseatic merchant, and later on a Hanseatic producer. And I played Lubeck and Hansa in Europe Universalis plenty of, uh, plenty of times. But I am not German. Despite the DDR in my name, I have nothing to do with Germany. So I say Hansa. Right, those elusive energy tubes. If I want an energy tube factory, I am going to require steel tubes, oils, plastics, steel, but very notably, I don't need anything else. So energy tubes are another initial setup that I could have, and apparently I need 28 of them, which is eye-watering. 28 energy tubes. Alright, if I refresh this, and I go to energy tube factory, and I say I want 28 of them, what madness is the game going to say? That is a powerful amount of silver slash platinum needed. The funny thing is, all the silver goes to waste. And I guess that's not very funny. I wonder if there's something, a byproduct. I wonder if the silver can be used as a byproduct for something. Hmm, you're not from East Germany? That's the only reason I followed you. Greeks from Munich, Bavaria, West Germany. Of course. Yeah, I got nothing to do with Germany. I've been there a few times. Been to Bonn, been to Köln. I think I've been up north. To Ham? No, that wouldn't make any sense. I'm sure I'd remember that. I've got an open invitation to go to Hamburg. I'll get there someday. But if I didn't go there from uh, Sweden, why would I go there from Hungary? That that energy tube requirement of 28 factories is terrifying. That's so many factories. And it's the noble metal mines that worry me perhaps the most. What am I meant to do with that much excess silver? Will it even get sold? If the silver doesn't get sold... I'm going to have to have some kind of setup where I use the silver for something. Don't know what, though. Anyway, 
I could make the 28 energy tube factories on their own. Lovely jubbly. Ignoring that, how about the high pressure tubes? Not high capacity lenses, but high pressure tubes. Uh, curiously, how many of those do I need? High pressure tube factories. I would need four of them, huh? Alright, well, let's look at four of you then. Add you in, auto fill you up. Well, there again with a steel tube necessity. But it doesn't look like you're reliant on any of the other goods. That's funny, I thought high pressure tubes were needed for something else. High pressure tubes, no, no, no. No, it's transformator, not tubes. Okay. Funny that the energy tubes and the high pressure tubes seem divorced from each other. The energy tubes are needed for the fusion generators, which is probably why so many of them are needed. Anyway, high pressure tubes can be done from the get-go. I would need four of them, times four, underlined because I can do those independently of everything else. The scary part is the amount of gas collecting needed for these. Fourteen of two types of gas collectors, another nine of another. That's so many gas collectors. Thirty-seven of them, I think. Oof, good thing that's a factory and not a mine. Can you imagine? A lot of excess going on around here. Excess water, excess helium and fluorine. Oh boy, this isn't. This is not looking sane anymore. This is starting to look very insane. Like, what am I doing with my life? Insane. All right, how about those conductors? Those seem necessary for just about everything. Conductor factory. Apparently, we need. Three of them. Well, that sounds nice and gentle. Three conductor factories. Three conductor fact. Oh, well, that is nice and simple. Conductors are needed for the turbines. And also, uh, they were needed for the, uh, the goods themselves here, right? Yeah, yeah, 15 conductors. That's a lot of conductors. Why is it so high? Oh, right, you, you couldn't see that. It was on the game under here. This is what I was looking at. 15 conductors needed. Maybe conductors are put out in a large number from the factory. It does say that it produces 60. Yeah, 60 per cycle. You make a huge number of conductors. Well, that explains a lot, doesn't it? Anyway, the conductor factories would be very simple to set up. I only need three. Underline. And what does it need? Steel factory, scrap metal, solar power, coal mine, noble metals, gold, platinum, silver, platinum, and zinc. It'll be very, very easy to set you up. Okay. I'll make a note of this. Very easy. I'll find somewhere that I can sell my conductors to at least make ends meet whilst I set up the whole chain. Hmm. Cologne, probably a work trip to Gamescon. I was there for Gamescon, uh, Gamescon Cologne, but I was also in Bonn and Cologne to meet a German friend of mine. Right, the last one is Gauss railing. Let's reset all of this. Look up the Gauss rail factory. Apparently I need five of them. Sounds easy, right? Five Gauss rail factories. What do you require? Well, you need the conductors. All the more reason to do conductors first. So in we go with conductor to Gauss rail. Electromagnets aren't on my list. Energy tubes are on my list. So the energy tubes also go towards Gauss rail. Uh, why does it say that the Gauss rail factory needs a Gauss rail factory? I guess they just didn't go to the top. Oh, I see. This is an alphabetical order, but also ordered by the tech level of the factory, right? That makes a bit of sense. Um, you also need high pressure tubes for the Gauss rails. All the more reason to do high pressure tubes early as well. So we've got three arrows coming towards it so far. 
Steel tubes and transformators, that's no big deal. Anything else here? God, it needs a lot of stuff for these gauss rails. I have to remember, gauss rails are also necessary for making some of my weapons. I believe the uh, rail cannons or rail guns I made were out of that. Okay, okay. We have a basic start here. So I think what I want to do first is set up my conductors. Those should be relatively easy to do. Relatively easy. How are we doing this then? We're going to look at the conductors to get this started up. Three conductor factories. Boy, it all seems so simple, doesn't it? The only not so simple part are grabbing these mines, because I need to locate them, set them up, package them down, and then bring them over. Oh, uh, the coal mine also counts, so that's one, two, six, seven mines. That can be done, we have the space for that. All right, all right, away you go. What I need to do is locate somewhere that is happy to buy my conductors at a reasonable price. I don't have to actually do this. There's nothing stopping me from just setting up the conductor mine, not selling conductors, and eventually just having the goods brought over. I count eight mines. Did I say seven? Because I meant eight. Maybe I didn't. One coal mine, one zinc mine, and then six noble metal mines, eight. Sounds about right to me. Uh, oh man. No rest for the wicked around here. The uh, the aliens are here as well and they'll need to be disposed of. There's one right there. See this guy? He's completely immune to antimatter. That is an AI cheat. There is no way to become immune to antimatter or any kind of attack yourself. You can at most get something like a 30% reduction in damage from it, but the AI just gets a nice cheat there. That's their resistance against in the bottom right. Fortunately, once their shields are gone, it's only the shields that get immunity, so uh, their hull is pretty quick to get destroyed. It's also a big reason why I use physical damage on my rocket launchers. Nothing, to my knowledge, resists physical at least not to the point of immunity. Please don't destroy that equipment, Doc. And absolutely do not make this into a, a hazard zone. <laughs> Quantum Frigate tries to dodge away from my attacks. Tries and fails. Actually, one thing I'm going to be doing a lot is jumping very far. What's my current range? It's good. But it could be gooder. So what I am going to do is I'm actually going to rip out my beloved combat carrier controllers because I really don't need all these guys here. And I'm going to put in a couple of jump boosters, big jump boosters, plus 15 range jump boosters. Main reason for that is that you cannot do a quick travel using uh, with docked stations or docked anything really, but you can do jumps with them, so we're jumping. And that means that some of my weapons won't actually fire, and I don't want the game to keep nagging me about it, but it's not the worst thing in the world, so we'll do, actually it's really annoying. That is very annoying, I wish it could be disabled. That's okay, I can live with it. Right, so, 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 where can I find a place that wants to buy conductors? Actually, the, oh, hello, they're very happy on conductors over here. Very, very conductor hungry. Well, that sounds quite right to me. Why don't we go and check that out? Is there such thing as the perfect Anno 1800? I don't know, Blowing Boar. I've played Anno 1800. I did not like it. I beat the game. I was then told I was playing it wrong, and I'm inclined to agree. Because I just built up a war fleet, killed everybody, and then built my cities and thought, well, this is pretty boring. Of course it was boring, I crushed my competition, but why would I leave them alive? For what possible reason? Right, so the desire for conductors is very high around here. Very high indeed. Probably because of all this place wanting their transformator factories. 
So I, I reckon right here, where there's a scrapyard, the Church of Akit won't like me doing this, but I can go and set up my little factory area right here, and I will. Baron also says that he was not very enamored with Anno. Didn't strike me as your kind of game, but your kind of game can be very surprising. After all, you've really taken to Paperboy for some reason. I'd love a reason to go to Paperboy. I should have never told you I've already ran it. I would have happily ran Paperboy again. Fun, wacky game that it is. So, I am going to steal this province away from the Church of Admiral Hackett because the demand for conductors is so nice and high over here. But before anything, I'm actually going to deploy one of those things I picked up. Uh, I'm also going to mark everything here as complete trash and then unmark it because it's getting in my way. And sort by rarity and I want... what in the world was it? It was some kind of energy suppressor. Here it is, here it is. Gonna use one of these. Blunk. And there it is, energy suppressor. It appears to have deployed two of them. Well, how about that? Ten hours until burning out. That was... I don't know why I deployed two of them, but whatever. Uh, that should prevent this place from being attacked by the Zotan and by uh, pirates. And that should give me plenty of time to set up at least this leg of the industry. My ship is more than happy to take everything on right now, so what I need to do is go and source myself. Uh, uh, a lot of mines. Mm -mm -mm, a lot of mines. You know what, I'm going to write this down on a piece of paper. Conductors first. Conductors. And this needs to be... Coal times one. Gold plat times three. Silver plat times three. And zinc times one. Alright, alright. Curiously, what are the, ma the demands for those goods around here? If I want to see if my zinc is going to make me any dosh around here. The demand for zinc is... There is no demand for zinc around here. Okay, well that's a, that's a great sign, isn't it? Oh, no, there we go. It's just taking a while to load. Zinc is lukewarm. It's warmer over there, but that's not much of my concern. How about silver? Silver I often find is a difficult good to sell. Silver is okay. How about gold? <laughs> gold is, once again, better over here. Heaven help me, why? Platinum. Again, quite middling where I am. Middling to cool. What about coal? Yeah, nobody ever wants coal. But that's okay. These factories don't exist to sell their goods. They only exist to provide their goods to my conductor factory. So, how do we find the mines? Well, oh, now this is where we all get very excited. We don't, really. We jump into these places with asteroids and we hope that we find some mines. So, let's go. Don't go here if you don't like the Zotan. We saw pirates in this sector. We saw Zotan in this sector. There are pirates here. There are Zotan here. I'm gonna jump around and grab eight of the asteroids. You might recall that we picked up 30 asteroids early on in this campaign to essentially generate our seed money before we were able to set up accelerators. Good times. Any chance of a perfect railway empire or still left disappointed with it? Um, I don't think I would trust doing it in a gaming mines railway empire game. I am just too disillusioned after that experience. There's something over there, but it's not an asteroid. At least not a claimable asteroid. We got a good way into doing that perfect uh, railway empire run. And for the game to just completely implode like that left me all sorts of unhappy. It's a similar feeling as when you're taking apart a ship in Ship Graveyard Simulator, 
you strip it down to the carcass and then, oh, there's a bug and you can't get rid of the final pieces, so you'll forever not have this one finished. Hello, claimable asteroid. Now we're talking. I did vastly reduce my shields for all of this, but I'm sure that won't be a big deal. And as long as I have my big DACA, this shouldn't be a problem. Although I shouldn't be doing this here. I'm actually causing myself extra work by having pirates that I don't immediately eviscerate. If I were doing this in one of the more outer regions, these pirates would already be dead. As it stands, they can actually tank a few shots and even shoot me back a bit. But whilst I'm waiting on that, I can at least go to what <laughs> I think he crashed on his way towards me. I can't take credit for that. Well, I, I can. I will. That was all me. So whilst all these suckers are getting utterly crushed, I can make my way over to you. That's just a bad idea to claim you with all of this going on, because you might get shot and destroyed, and I'd rather not have to deal with any damage. But yes, pirates very often defend the, um, the claimable asteroids that I so covet. I haven't even touched Railway Empire 2. Again, why would I? If Railway Empire 1 let me down the way it did, why would I touch the second one? Gaming minds have really lost their touch. Can't believe Patrician 4 was, uh, I think, a 2010 release. And even at the time, it was far from a, a great game, but I very much enjoyed it. It's just when they when they come along with the likes of Port Royale 4, and it's a regression. I think I called it that in my review. A regression with a shiny new coat of paint. Made me really think they'd lost it. I never... Yeah, that, that was another thing. It didn't look any different from the first game. And the, the features that I were that I was told about just seemed so ridiculously lame. It's like, hey, you can have eight parallel lines instead of four in this one. I, you be still my beating heart? Is that really meant to get me excited? It felt just more like of a crummy limitation in the first game that I could only have four parallel lines. Made organizing your lines a bit of a pain. Anyway, one down. We're going to find ourselves the coal mine. Irreversible? I don't care. Oh, I might care about the naming convention. Crumbs. Um, I want these very much segregated from the, uh, the other mines and things I have because I'm very much not caring about their... Um, I'm not caring about their economic output. I'm only caring about them providing... So, I guess I should name these things like Conductor Coal Mine 1. Yes, I think. Conductor's Coal Mine 1. Conductor's Gold Plat 1. Conductor's Zinc 1. Conductor's everything else fine. I guess I could just call it Cond for short. Gauss, Cond, HP tubes, E tubes, F gens, P cells, turbines. Okay, alright. So coal mine, yes, and this will be conductor coal 01. Chunk. And what do we do with you? Well, we do all the fun stuff. We engage transport mode, yes. We bundle you down into a tiny little box. Dunk. We tell you to auto-assign your crew. Always comes with 30 crew, very generous of the game. And then I just come along and dock you to the ship. I actually did play Let's Build a Zoo and I didn't think it was any good. 
Right, let's not do this inside the barrier. I'm just asking for trouble doing it here. Let's go hunting outside the barrier. That's one down, seven to go. I know, I know, we're all having a lot of fun here. There is a big part of me considering not doing this entire chain on stream. I've done everything else in the game apart from this. But I think even I might reach my limits for something I'm willing to do on stream for this. Then again, the perfect... Yeah, yeah, there we go. Baron's in saying, but I'm farming all these points. Yeah, but we could have point farming and me playing a game that's fun to play and somewhat fun to watch. Hey, there we go. Got ourselves our asteroid already. This will be gold plat. What what runs off the, the tongue better? Gold plat or plat gold? I suppose the right thing to do is to consult my existing fleet. Mine... Okay, we use gold plat. And silv gold and silv plat. Go away, pirates. I'm busy. And you are well positioned to be blocked by that uh, asteroid. Lucky you. Alright, come on, take care of that bleeding loser. It's good that you were here. We gladly accept help in combat. Uh, could you be a little gladder? Shying away from potent viewer reduction strats. You hate to see it. Uh, it is actually Avorion uh, past the initial episodes has been a brilliant viewer reduction strat. I don't think we've broken 300 viewers in Avorion since like episode two or three. Right, second map. Is noble metal mine that does gold and platinum. Gold plat, yes. And what was our name? It's Conductor Gold Plat 01. Con Gold Plat 01, sure. And then again, we package up our little facility. Boink. We tell it to send its crew to where the crew need to go. And then we engage in transportation mode. Bada boom. It's another reason that I love doing streams like these that figuratively nobody else cares about. It's a nice way to actually challenge my belief that I don't care about viewers when I decide what to stream. It's all well and good just saying that, but can you can you back it up? Uh, no asteroids there. There are a few asteroids here. Few is enough. I'm aware it can sound rather cocky to say I don't care about viewer numbers when I regularly get triple digit viewers for my streams. But that was still the attitude I had back when I was streaming to absolutely nobody telling me that my mic was muted back in the good old Aztec EU4 streams. Let's keep on checking with those asteroids. Ironically, the best viewer reduction scene seems to be DDR. You are right about that, Baron. No stream ever consistently reduces viewer numbers quite like DDR. And DDR is one of the, if not the, longest running stream on this channel. Uh, no asteroids claimable around here. There's just the research satellite, which is none of my concern. And cheers, Mare Beast. Coming in to actually put some bits down to say that you've enjoyed these Orion streams. Thank you. You're very welcome. I was actually surprised at the... Uh, the performance of Avorion on YouTube as well. Quite a lot of people tuning in. You know, for the first one, much like Patrician 4, people tuning in for the first one and then dropping like flies for the subsequent videos always gives me a good giggle. I take a moment to look at those numbers at some point after the run is done, because I know some people like to see some behind the, uh, 
behind the scenes YouTube analytics. We actually did an analytics. Um, I think it was after I did my tier listing of all games played in 2023. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I fully intend on doing that again. That said, though, if I don't shake Avorion, it's not going to be a lot of new games for this year. That's a claimable asteroid, and I should be able to steal it without these pirates getting on my case. The worrying thing is I could ram an asteroid accidentally and lose the package facilities that I've attached to my ship. So I'm trying to be a little bit ginger in my approach. Not to accidentally ram something and lose them. It's also why I make them out of organite, just so that they are a bit more durable to a bit of a pounding. Right, I'm going to claim you, found a mine, I need another gold plat, and this is conductor gold plat zero two. And again, engage transport mode, take it over, bundle her up, and tell you to get your crew auto-assigned, malcontent. Let's attach you and get out of here before these pirates... Well, not that the pirates could really hurt me in any meaningful way, but I don't want to bother with them right now. They'll call in reinforcements. They could even jo uh, jam my escape. We're good. We're good. In that case, let's go and... Check that out. Any chance of ever doing a throw ba And I've lost the rest of it. Uh, here we go. Throwback Timbuks 2 run. Uh, I have no intention of going back to EU4. I even fired the game up a few months ago now. Just to re-familiarize myself with the game. But really, the, the drive isn't there anymore. I have squeezed every last bit of entertainment out of Europe Universalis that I can think to do. It's like posing me that question, how about that one more, one more Frostpunk stream? The stream of all streams to send the game off for good. It's like, well, I think I've had enough last hurrahs out of Frostpunk. I several times during my heydays of Frostpunk said, that's it, I'm done with the game, I've done everything. And then there'd always be something that brings me back. But I think it was child labor. Finally, with that done, I really felt like the game had been completely broken across my legs. Oh, you're right, it's probably going to be 10 years since Three Mountains really soon. Uh, this year actually marks the 10 years since I started streaming. I've been raking my head a little bit about doing something special for that, but, you know, Avorion's been kind of filling up my head entirely. I believe my earliest YouTube VODs would be something like Golden Horde or Ramazan from 2013. Back then I was living in Scotland, in Edinburgh. I didn't stream when I lived uh, further up north. Did I check you? Probably wouldn't have anything though. It would have the energy thingamajigger. People say they can't sleep, uh, they can sleep to Frostpunk, but I can't relate. Jake screaming, get back to work. It doesn't arrest you from REM, I'll never know. I think people can sleep through all sorts of things. I used to listen to the radio as I fell asleep. I think just asteroid fields are my best bet. That way there's no pirates and there's a good chance still of finding a claimable asteroid. I got three. Which means I still need another five. Are you a claimable asteroid? You look like a claimable asteroid. This is a horrible sector for setting up industry in, so I'm glad I'm not doing it here. This thick fog. I hate it. In a casual run of Avorion that I did in my own time, I set up uh, a zone near the center. They just had everything. It had um, smuggler yard, uh, shipyard, equipment dock, everything that I could get, I put there. But unfortunately, I had set it up in a foggy sector. I didn't think that would be a problem. And then I eventually realized that it's a huge problem. Because look at that, visibility is so low here. God, it reminds me of driving in the middle of a blizzard. 
or, you know, thick fog. Okay, and this is the final gold plat that I need. Gold plat transform, yes. The conductor's gold plat 03 is now operational. Set it up for transport mode. Set it up to auto assign its crew members, which for some reason doesn't actually activate unless you take it over. And then packaged facility engage. Packaged facility can do nothing but just sit there. No thrusters, no engines, but no problem, because we're just going to come on up to it, not smash into it. It would be an incredibly expensive mistake to blow one of these things up. I've said it before and I shall say it once again, docking is such a cool mechanic in this game. I love it. There we go, that's all three uh, gold plats, and now I need three silver plats. And I'm going to look for an asteroid field. Oh wait, that's a container field, but container fields can also have asteroids that are claimable in them, so let's just jump for it anyway. Oh boy, that looks like a big boy spaceship. Kinda looks like a woodlouse. Yep. This is almost as big as they can get. Not strictly speaking though, if you didn't put functional blocks, your ships could be enormously huge, almost arbitrarily huge. And if I put in certain subsystems, I could have even larger ships, but at the cost of functional subsystems. Go away, we're meeting a friend. Well, I'm also meeting a friend. That friend is called Large Claimable Asteroids, but I don't think there are any here. Mm, no, this container field was truly just a container field. It's also a container field. That's eh, an asteroid field. Let's go. That's why I've kept my guns turned off so I don't instant aggro pirates that I find. Much like Patrician 4, there is no end to the piracy in the game. Which is a funny parallel to draw because a lot of the complaints on uh, Patrician forums or other discussion areas about Patrician, the game, is that the there's no way to get rid of pirates and the developer response has been pirates are a part of the game this is something of note there's an unknown hidden mass signature next to this now i have obviously searched everywhere here so there's no reason that a mass signature should have evaded my explorer i believe that mass signature has been generated since then and it has generated a Mad Energy Lab satellite to prevent the game from soft locking due to lack of those to continue blowing up just in case you somehow blew them all up but managed to lose getting the drop. I'm going to test that theory by going over to it. What is a woodlouse? Is that, I think that's a little bug, actually. Yeah, of course, a louse is a bug. A wood louse, I guess, is one that exists to enjoy some wood. What is all this? Could it be that I'm wrong? There's a wormhole here. That's strange. How did the game generate a wormhole after I scouted the area? Oh god, this is killing the screen. Huh. There's no way this was somewhere that I hadn't checked out, because he he checked out this, 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 and this, so I actually don't know how this generated. Very strange. Hmm. Oh well. Also, Captain Hee Hee. Even if you rename your captains, it still uses their original name when saying where they scouted at. It's very sad. It makes me wonder why they even have a rename function. Yeah, time to double check all sectors. Time to check every one of the one million sectors that we've scouted out. I think not, Baron. You're not getting your points that easy. Maybe the explorer was a low level at that point and they can miss sectors. No, explorers always chart everything in their sector. Miners will only find asteroids and other things like that, but explorers always find everything. 
Is the other end explored? Mm. Yeah, maybe that's it, Iskrimur. Maybe wormholes don't generate their end point until you go through them, but that wouldn't make much sense because it shows on the galaxy map them pointing through to somewhere. This game still hiding secrets from me, even after how much I've played a bit. Right, the hunt for the... Uh, okay, good asteroid field. I don't want to waste my time with more of these container fields. They've been just letting me down. Don't worry, though, we've got four out of eight, so we're halfway towards getting our glorious conductor factories established. I will also want a shipyard to bring with me, because there's a lot of different shipyardy like things that I want. Actually, is that true? It should be a small enough bunch that I don't need the shipyard set up. Maybe, maybe. Something that I'm likely going to regret at some point is not marking where I've already searched for asteroids because I believe that these claimable asteroids do not respawn and there are actually a finite number of them in the galaxy. Which is not the same as a finite source of uh, mines. Because you can always steal mines off the AI. You can go over with a boarding crew and simply take the mine that you want. Now, I'm not going to do that, not with everyone allied. But it does mean you have an inexhaustible amount of mines. Assuming the AI does actually rebuild them. And I think they might, even though... We have not witnessed it happen at all. I still think they will. We have business to... Boy, I am having suck luck finding more of these things. Perhaps I shouldn't be checking for asteroid field at all. It's only lagging my experience here. I should just go dot to dot. That seems to work out pretty well for me. I actually prefer finding the asteroids before you explore the yellow blips. Ah, it just tends to work out better for me, but we have now explored all the yellow blips. Sands those weird ones that came out of nowhere. You got a couple of things, but neither of them here are asteroids. Make way for our king and leave immediately. Well, if you don't have what I'm after, I will happily leave immediately. I played the Patty 4 playlist many times. I've never gotten past episode 1 before falling asleep. It's the most reliable sleep aid I've ever found. It is certainly quite dull. What is that? Oh, it's just another one of those um, satellite things, which is probably a good reason not to be searching for these things around the Mad Energy Lab area. I think I'll take that self-advice to heart and actually go and scout outside of this area. So if I take Malcontent and go down here, for example. Maybe try with this place. Pirates here. Smugglers here. But smugglers and asteroids. Smugglers can easily overlook claimable asteroids. Not asking the world here, game. Just give me four more. So this conductor factory setup is one seventh of what is needed for the production line. It's also the smallest. Oh God! <laughs> they just immediately destroyed uh, Gold Plat Three. They just took one shot and blew it clean up because I warped into a hostile syndicate. Oh well, I'm actually one short then. Now I need five and not four. I uh, I did at one point believe that your uh, your shields envelop docked stations, but I was wrong about that, and this is why I should not have been jumping around with all these uh, stations attached to me. But now I'm angry, and I'm going to blow them up for that. He says, "Better check the amount of hull they have before making that decision." Well, that was very nasty of them. 
Just that one clean shot blowing up my guy straight away. So can we see them on the fleet list then? Yeah, there we go. Just object destroyed. Gold Plat 3 is dead. So I need to remake Gold Plat 3. Tragic. That's what I get for assuming I wouldn't have any problem with these smugglers. They bring in reinforcements. Let's not have those re- Oh, God! <laughs> And they just shot off Gold Plat 2 as well. Well, we're all learning lessons today. I think they've just... Oh, they just shot off my coal mine as well. All the mines are gone. And unlike the ships, I can't get those back some other way. So yes, do not fly around with just your mines hanging off willy-nilly if you think you're going to run into trouble. Alright, well, clearly the only correct course of action is revenge. All this because you didn't bring the tactical assault pyramid. Yeah, that would have prevented another battlefield target, wouldn't it? Did I already destroy their... Oh yeah, I did. Okay, right, that shipyard's going down now then. There we go. Object destroyed. Object destroyed. The only one remaining survivor is uh, Gold Plateau 1. You need protective shells on the ship you build after you dock the mines. Well, that is true, but the cleverer thing to do is just not leave my mines uh, dangling off the ship. I should bring them straight back to where I need them deployed. But, you know, I got cocky. I didn't actually consider that I might be jumping into a hostile syndicate. But the syndicate should no longer exist after this, because they're all dead. So if I go and check distance, this Urarunuk syndicate is apparently only here and now is very dead. That puts an end to you. It also puts an end to three of the four mines that I picked up so far. You could deploy them, but will you? Probably not. Because what I could do is just not jump into where the dangerous pirates are. Still losing three of the mines is a bit of a pain. Just in the problem of finding them. Well, that's not entirely true because I have actually found a bunch of mines already and labeled them on the mine uh, on the map. I could just go and grab those, pick them up, and I might actually do that. I've gone to the effort of finding them. I think I will do that actually. Oh, crumbs! Further mistakes were made. I didn't turn off my guns, so I immediately aggroed these guys. Fortunately, unlike the uh, previous pirates, these are not faction pirates, so as you can see, they are dying like flies. And even if they do manage to shoot one of my stations here, I can't imagine it'll be a particularly deadly shot. And there is a replacement mine here. Okay, so all is well. There are replacement mines here, plural. Oh boy, these pirates are holding out on me. Oh well, thank you kindly, pirates. Let's get our replacements going. Let's also note that our uh, noble metal mine did take damage. That's okay, we'll get it all fixed up. So, about that coal mine that I want back. Coal's a bit of a pain, you need it in bulk, but it's uh, very... Well, you've got to get a mine for it. There's no other way to get coal that I know of. Right, coal mine, come back to me. And this is the Conductor Coal 01. And again, take it over. Engage transport mode. Bundle the thing up. Chunk. And tell them to auto-assign their crew. 
was going to pick you up. Them getting shot isn't so bad. It's not nearly as bad as colliding with an asteroid and losing it that way. That's just humiliating. But it still could easily be done, so let's not test fate here. It would be more painful if this were early on in the game, because the financial loss of blowing up a mine is terrifying. Not only do you pay the several million to transform a mine, you also pay uh, in uh, potential costs, because you could have made money just selling the mine. This mine, for example, I get within 200 meters of, and then what I could do is sell the asteroid. So instead of getting three quarters of a million, we instead spend money. What number of noble metal mines are we on anyway? We've gold plat 01, so it's going to be gold plat 02. Gold plat transform conductor gold plat. Is it gold plat or plat gold? It says gold plat on my notes, so I'll believe it. Number two. There we go. Let's engage in transport mode. Let's auto assign our crew and package ourselves up. This is a very good area for finding these. Now you come with me. On top of that, you. You're damaged. Please be undamaged. Did that actually repair you? I think it did. Okay, very good. I guess I'll go and pick up the claimed asteroids then instead. There's a claimed asteroid over there. There's a claimable there. There's a claimable there. Uh, there's a claimable down here. I will grab what I can here first. Rex, sound good. I'll grab these to take me up to six. I'll deposit six and then go and grab the last two just in case we have another uh, fiasco. And then I'm going to get these conductors done and done right. Why am I immediately fighting again? Please, please, please don't blow up my minds again. They seem to be targeting my minds. I'm noticing one of my minds taking uh, damage there. I'm not happy about that. One of the mines on the left side. Yeah, they, they got chain guns going straight for my, uh, my mine there. Please don't. There we go. Phew. Too close for comfort. That explains why there are wrecks over here. Sadly, there's no claimable mines to be had. Or are there? What is that? Oh, that's a traveler stash, isn't it? Yeah, there's a beacon and a traveler stash. Not worth my time. There's nothing in there that could really be so good for me. Let's just go and grab our... Oh, apparently there are pirates here. <laughs> That I was gonna go, huh? Gotta hand it to those organite shells, keeping these things from being completely obliterated due to some scattered fire, though. Wonder if the pirates will be back. I definitely cleared out those pirates finding that claimable asteroid. That's it. These mines are these mines are getting shields now. 
Yeah, it would probably be a good idea to incorporate shields into the package facility design, but I also have to keep in mind the crew requirements for them, because they only start out with 20-odd crew. Okay, looks like the pirates are back. I highly doubt there are going to be a whole heap of them. Although hats off to that guy for surviving as long as he did. Oi. Stop shooting! Oh, there goes the mine! <laughs> oh, boy, what a trade. And I don't think the other mines are long for the... No! No. Okay. Took twice to learn my lesson. Do not fly into enemy territory with packaged up mines docked to you. Looks like I'm trading at least two to get one here. Like I said. Like you said. Okay, well don't worry, my lesson has now been learned. What did we just lose there anyway? We lost coal one and gold plat two. So we're back to square two. That's okay though, let's get a coal mine back. Claim you, found mine, coal mine, blonk. And this is conductor coal 01. And then we go into it, we engage transport, we set its cruise auto assign, we package it down. I have to pay for that organite to package it down as well, you know. And then let's go and actually bring it to where we want it. And I forget where that is, but I'm sure we'll find it. Uh, there weren't any other claimable mines around here, were there? Or claimable asteroids, rather. So it seems. So I can remove this note about claimable asteroids. I think I've now paid five to end up with two. So I would have only been one away if I hadn't been so cocky. But yeah, cocky is how I operate. Where was I wanting to set up my... It was at a scrapyard. I think it was here. Yes, I'm willing to believe it was there. I'm just going to jump empty uh, sectors. That's actually significantly less risky. I suppose there's a risk that I run into something like the AI, but I doubt that'll happen here. At least Merabeast seems happy about us losing the mines. No cheers. What I could do for each of these guys is give them impenetrable flat shields. Could give them each a bulwark. That way I could jump around and not worry about them dying to an errant shot here and there. Okay, this does appear to be the right place where I set up my en energy signature thingamajigger. So, 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 let's just say goodbye to you. Ta-ta. And the other one. Off you go. I distance myself from both of you whilst you do your transformation. Because now you become the beautiful swan or whatever. This is apparently typical mine.xml. It is damaged as well. There we go, two whole organite of damage. Typical mine, become typical mine. Do you have enough crew for all of this? Of course you do, I don't even need to uh, apply more to you. And I can engage station mode with you now. And where's the other one? We do the same with you. You become typical mine. And you engage station mode, chunk. And there we go, we've got two of the mines, which are kind of close to each other, but that's okay, they can use their docks to push each other away. They tend to push each other about four kilometers away if they can. And now with two of them done, the coal and one of the three silver plats, I can go and grab the others. 
which of course won't be a problem. Well, we know there's one right there. Infested with pirates, infested with not a problem. So, two down, six to go. Grab them, bring them back, and then build the other things that I need. What else do I need anyway? Quick check on the list. Solar plant, metal trader, steel factory, and the conductor factory. Does that mean the conductor factory only really needs steel? It probably needs the energy cells. Hmm. Well, no, it's going to need some of these noble metals, isn't it? I guess we'll find out as we build it. Can we bet on how many times you'll survive your next gathering trip? Well, I'll survive. The question is whether or not the mines survive. Hey, where are those satellites I put down? They're there, but they don't show up on this list, strangely enough. How bizarre. I've also stolen the sector away from the Church of Akat. Don't know how the Church of Akat feels about that. Fine, I didn't even lose relations over that. Interesting. Malcontent is in position. Let's go. So the reason I don't bring all the entourage with us is we're not really getting into fights that the entourage would be uh, would be making much of a difference in, except of course the fact that I just blew up my mind several times there, but that was just a way to learn important lessons. Wouldn't have mattered if I'd disabled my guns. The AI, for whatever reason, re-enables all guns whenever they're given a command. Besides, surely it's for the better to just wipe these guys out so I can safely get my mine. I, I think I will attach a bulwark to one and then continue jumping around. I should have plenty of spare bulwarks, right? If I go to my inventory and I go tell me about the bulwarks... Oh yeah, look at all those bulwarks! How could I not survive 120,000 damage with impenetrable shields? We're, we're going to continue jumping around this time with bulwarks. The fun, of course, being that if I fail... Why are these guns now not auto? I think it rejigged what was auto and what was not. And now I don't have enough auto turrets? How bizarre. Oh well, far from a concern. So I guess I need to add one additional step into this. So I claim you, I found my gold plat again. And you are now... Conductor, gold, plat. Yes, God'll play. Gold, plat, zero, two. And then we get in. We engage transport. Yes. We auto assign the crew. We add in the bulwark. Junk. Any complaints about that? Yes, you don't like the energy situation. That's okay, because you should have enough energy in package facility. Yes, you do. All right, so now, uh, where are its shields? Oh, there's a slight problem. Flat shields only add shields if there were shields to begin with. So packaged facility, I thought I redid packaged facility to actually add little bits like that. I know I did, I guess I didn't save it. Anyway, what packaged facility needs is a tiny bit of... You're all made of organite, aren't you? Can I do an organite shield? No, it's not available on organite. Well, no skin off my nose. Here's your Avorion tiny little shield generator of arbitrarily small size. I'll put one here and put one here just in case one of them gets shot off and just like that you get your flat shield and I will also hmm, hmm, I will save that package facility. I actually don't like the fact that it's made of a Vorion. Ah, well, doesn't really matter at this point, does it? Save current design. Delete package facility. Rename you to package facility. And now you have shields. 
And now I can go flying around with you, and it won't be a problem, right? Wow, he listened to me. This is a first. I don't know how to feel. You feel very intelligent. It's not that I never listen to people, but I have to think I have got better ideas. Let's clear this off. Remove claimable asteroid, because there isn't any more. And then let's go and grab another claimable asteroid. I believe there's one right here. And then we'll have all of the gold plats done, and they won't get destroyed this time. The last set had a 25% survival rate. <laughs> Alright, is that my claimed asteroid? I think it is. Don't like seeing all these guns pointing their wee lasers like that. Oh, oh, easy now, easy now. No amount of impenetrable shields will save you from asteroids. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> ah. The malcontent can handle it. The little strapped on package facility would have just blown up. Like a cheap party balloon on impact there. Now, what was this again? This is our final gold plat. Found mine. Yes. Conductor gold plat 03 engaged. Enter ship, and then we become package facility with shields. We strap on a bulwark, we tell our crew to get to work, and we engage transport mode. Go, go. No problem. Sometimes you take a little bit of damage when docking, but it's seldom a problem. And with all those impenetrable shields, surely I'm safe to go and pick up some more asteroids. I think what I will do is I'll jump down to you and then head up. My range is enormous. So I can jump to a place that might have a claimable asteroid and then go to one that I know that does. There's a bunch of pirates there, but there's nowhere they're getting through all these impenetrable shields that I've given my little facilities. Pirates are attacking the sector. They're terrible, because this is where I have all of my industry here. So I'd rather this did not become a hazard zone. There we go. Well, I don't have all my industry here, but I've got my beloved book factory that makes me a pitiably low amount of money. Now, where was I jumping to again? Ah, oh, that just bought extra time for the shields to regenerate on my packaged facilities. That is a beacon. And a beacon is not a claimable asteroid. You, however, certainly are. Just eyeing up the shield amount of my little package facilities, wondering how fast it's... how fast they're gonna get blown away. Because now I would lose them and the bulwark. And I'm not sure which I'd feel more impained about, because both of them cost me time more than anything else relevant. I guess the bulwark is easier to replace. Get out of here, pirates. You are getting in the way. So the reason we even have claimable asteroids around here on the map is... Hang on, is that another one? Ooh, two claimable asteroids. Well, now that is nice. Uh, occasionally when jumping around I will find places that have claimable asteroids and since I don't immediately need them I just put a little note of them on my map to come back later. And that's, well, this is later and this is coming back. That's gold plat 2 and 3 next to me, so this is going to be silv plat 1 and 2. 
And I'm going to double check that it is indeed silver platinum I need. Yes, silver platinum. Come to me. Five, four, three, interact, claim, found mine, silver platinum. And I believe I call it silv plat. So conductor period silv plat zero one. Engage. Engage transport mode. Take it over and then the three things we do. We'll work one, assign crew two, package up three, dock, and good to go. So ram the thing now. Just pull it in, gently does it, snap to position. And let's, without smashing an asteroid, go and meet the other asteroid. Smashing it with the tail end of the malcontent doesn't count. Neat. I'd assume there would only ever be one per system. I've never seen three, but I've certainly seen two on a rare occasion. But claimable asteroids are not that rare, and they're an excellent source of early game money. I have been tempted to make a little YouTube series about getting started in Avorion. Kind of a, like a pick-your-own-adventure novel, but for uh, for figuring out how to start up with Avorion. So it would just give you the very basics, how to get your first seed money and set up your first ship and whatnot, and how to get any modded ships you might want. And then from there, what do you want to do? Do you want to fight pirates? Do you want to trade? Do you want to explore? If you want to do any of these, click on this next video and we'll explore that idea and just give some tips. It's an idea, but I'm not big on doing straight to YouTube content. I love streaming. I don't have any love for video making. But I do have a lot of love for this game, so I wonder if that'll balance out. Uh, so this is Conductor Silv Platt 2 Silv Platt? Yeah, that seems about right. And then... how are we doing this again? I've forgotten. Engage transport mode, yes. Take over, press B. Package up the facility. Auto assign the crew and slap on an impenetrable bulwark. And we get to work. I should have somewhere else to dock you on the front. There we go, I'm becoming quite the high value prize for someone to shoot at again. Two claimable asteroids, I think now there are no claimable asteroids. Thank you, good night and much love. Claimable asteroid, huh? Maybe I should head back with what I have. The galaxy map is so laggy, it was almost certainly a mistake to chart the whole galaxy in this run. Sometimes you just gotta live with your mistakes. There are asteroids here, yeah, I'll, I'll give that a go. Ooh, and there's proof of ever we needed them. You can find a claimable asteroid next to a wormhole. Are you the biggest streamer who plays this game or are there others, asks Kino. I have never seen anybody else stream of Orion, which is a sh well, uh, that's not that's not true. There are some people within this community that have streamed it, but outside of this community, uh, I've never seen a stream of it, which is a shame because I'd like to. I'd like to see other people play this game. Maybe I get some hot tips or new ideas off of watching their play style. But it is undeniably a slow burn of a game. I was actually watching someone stream X4. Man, it's a slow game. But this game seems relatively niche. Probably has an even smaller player base than X. And there's our claimable asteroid, dead ahead. That doesn't mean we should go dead ahead without looking where we're going, because I have two package facilities in the front of my ship. And if my depth perception weren't on point, I would have smashed right into that rock and lost them. 
This is sill plat number three I'm grabbing here, and then I need only one more, and we'll have all the makings for the conductors. The next biggest recent stream is a Russian streamer. Ah, yes, yeah, so this game's pretty big with Russians and Germans, go figure. Uh, why am I not claiming you? There we go. Claim it, found a mine, Silve Plat 3. Conductors, Silve Plat 03. Chunk. And again, engage transportation mode, take it over, and package it down. Assign the crew and slam on a bulwark. The bulwark I can get back because you don't need an equipment dock in order to make those kinds of changes to a facility. Very nice. Let's get a little closer. I do still have a free dock pot for you. Oh, I hope you don't collide with your friends. Hey, there we go. This ship has just become far too valuable for its own good. I need to start making my way back to where I was setting up all of my industry, which was here in the Organite Zone. I say all of my industry, a little fraction of my industry. Poor galaxy map bursting apart at the seams. Cavaliers, pirates, wrecks. I'll check out the wrecks. I'm hopeful that I can find my final claimable asteroid on the way back. I wonder why they make you hover to pick which of the noble metal mines you want. Seems very goofy. There's a lot of gooey things in this game that are certainly very goofy. The UI and the UX leave a lot to be desired here. A lot of stuff here, but it appears to all just be... Rex and wreck accessories. No, that 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 I think is a ship that I could um, I could actually salvage and get running again. Other than that, there are a bunch of nice stashes, traveler stashes, secret stashes, locked stashes, sealed containers. They're all reasons that I love playing an explorer in this game. Rex, but no asteroids. Asteroids with pirates. Plain old asteroids, I'll check it out. Being able to just go into a sector like this and find those containers and just grab freebies. It's random what they're going to be, but sometimes they're really good. It's also the cheapest way in the game to get yourself some building knowledge. I know we have to cast our minds back a long time for it, but once upon a time, our main priority in our run was to gain new building knowledge. There are no valuable objects here. Claimable asteroids show up as... Ugh, let's not tangle with pirates right now. They, they show up as valuable objects at the top here, but none here, so we just move on. Why did you have to say they were gay three times, Crickney? Right, pirates. Uh, I'm pretty confident we could handle pirates with the impenetrable shields on our little facilities. The question is, why risk anything? Oh, pirate! <laughs> Never mind, the pirates will come for me. Loads of asteroids around here, but uh, throw me a bone with a claimable one so we can finish off our industry. Really takes me back to an earlier part of this run where we were gathering up these just to get our mines going. I think I started off by putting down six or seven mines and then I expanded it up to 30. And I stand by that decision. It was a very good one to generate automated money. And it was important to set up automated money because... The game was idling quite a lot. 
Asteroids, asteroids, asteroids. All right, check out both of these. And with the idle money, we were able to set up accelerators, and accelerators are just infinite money. I don't know what the tried and tested meta for this game is, but I believe the sooner you get accelerators, the sooner you will never want for money again. I mean, the, the numbers speak for themselves here. These two factories have made me a hundred billion credits in profit. Sure, they had quite a lot of uh, overheads, but as long as you can field the two billion to get it started up, then you are in infinite money zone. Now, I know two billion is a lot of money, but that's why I have the mines. The mines get you up to two billion, and then the accelerators get you up to hundreds of billions. I am having suck luck finding the final claimable mines around here. New challenge, spend all of your money. Ooh, how would I spend all this money? And this is just half of my money. I got more money sitting in the Alliance Vault as well. Hmm. Even if I were to keep buying and selling the same goods from a, uh, a trade depot, I wouldn't be shifting my money faster than I would be earning it. How would you very quickly spend 20 billion? I could build a very large ship and then have it get blown up somehow and then just keep doing that. But how would you blow it up fast enough? Oh, you could bring it over to Project IHDTX. The guy with the one-hit-kill railgun thing. Just keep feeding him immeasurably expensive ships. But I think then you'd run out of materials for making the ships before you ran out of the money. Hmm. Fascinating quandary, that. Okay, come, come on, game. I just need one more asteroid. There's one right over there. You know what? Screw whatever I'm planning on doing. Let's go over in that direction. Container field, something else. Sometimes you just get a big old piece of wreckage, which in my opinion is not worth dealing with unless you have uh, our salvage fighters. That would make it worth your while. Pirates, wrecks, wrecks, asteroids. I'll check these out on the way over to a place that I know has an asteroid. Because I'm dragging my heels on getting these conductors operational. Use docked solid organite ships and chuck them at stations. Docked solid organite ships. Hmm. Back in 2017, they still had a 32 bit signed integer for the money. Oof. That's like playing old versions of Europa Universalis, where money could underflow, overflow. The fix for it was perhaps a disappointing fix. Just cap money at one million ducats. Wrecks, pirates, smugglers. More wrecks with no asteroids. Something strange. Probably an energy uh, doohickey. Which I had never seen spawn with an asteroid. That's all the more reason to want to check. I didn't check, but I'm sure that, yeah, as expected, it's another another energy research satellite and notably not a claimable asteroid here, but that's okay. I don't know what I was doing over here. Well, making allies, no doubt, but I did find a claim. Wait, a claimed asteroid? I didn't just find it, I already claimed it. That's okay, though. I can still turn it into a beloved zinc mine. Zinc is good money, but doesn't matter. We're using the zinc to make... Conductors. Now, where's my asteroid? Let's not ram anything this time. Just 
hastily make my way over to it. Glad I kept all those inertia dampeners and thrusters inside this ship, because this ship goes pretty fast. Part of the reason it goes pretty fast is I have another best-in-slot item here. The Loot Pursuit Class Turret Subsystem gives seven armed turrets and a whopping 50% velocity and acceleration. Even gives loot collection range that's not insignificant, unlike the vanilla loot collection stuff. This is our final one, the Zinc Mine, yes, and this is Conductor Zinc. Zinc is spelled with a Charlie, zero, one. And then we set it for transport mode, yes. And then we take it over, we bundle her up, we slap on another bulwark, I'm running out of bulwarks here, to tell the crew to get to bleeding work. And then I'll attach it to the other side, just so it doesn't feel too lonely. The larger the dock, the larger the docking power, but I find that there's seldom any issue, even with small ones. And now, equipped with another three, four, five, six stations, we can surely, safely, make our way back over. So I'm just going to take these very safe, empty areas, and that's going to get us over to, uh, where was I again? I think I'm going the wrong way. Well, I'm sure that'll do us. Also, I don't want to load all these sectors, so let me just exit into the drone and watch you on the galaxy map instead. Also, maybe I'll uh, not go a daft way. Where's the nearest shipyard, then? No, no, no. These are all hazard zones. I have a feeling they've been blown up. Potentially by me a long time ago. Doesn't change the fact that I need a shipyard. There's a shipyard. So I can jump over here to actually make my own shipyard to bring back over. Not sure if I want to do that. I'd have to... I'd have to... You know what? I will do that, actually. I will. I will absolutely do that. Alright, malcontent. It doesn't really matter where these guys are, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move over a little bit, and then I'm going to undock everything. Did you just notice one of them fly away? Because I certainly did. And then I think I'll tell Malcontent to fly over to the shipyard. Hopefully they won't destroy my other ships in the process. Actually, there's a very big chance that this could uh, go large and then just destroy one of these other ones, but whatever, let's, let's figure this one out first. So if I transform you rapidly into this mine, you don't destroy the other one, that's good. So what am I doing with each of these guys? I'm transforming them, I'm engaging station mode, and I'm ripping off the bulwark because these stations actually come equipped with a minor amount of shield. But the major thing is the 30 million hull, which should keep them alive in the case of being attacked, and they shouldn't be attacked. So we go over to you as well. We engage station mode. We turn you into a beautiful swan. And I take back my beloved bulwark. Crunch, yeah, you guys smash into each other, but that's far from my concern. You as well. Station mode, yes. Becoming big mine, yes. Tearing out bulwark, yes. And then you. Becoming mine, yes. Tearing out bulwark, yes. Engaging in station mode, yes. Who else is just a little box floating around here? Or is this where I find out that uh, some of them were little boxes and just got smashed a bit? Oh god, this isn't going to be good for you! <laughs> Alright, engage station mode, yes! T 
tear out bulwark and become big mine. Oh. Any more for any more? There is still one package facility over here. I got blasted away early on. Didn't take any damage though. Credit to Organite. Become this, tear this out, and engage in station mode. Did I miss any of them engaging in station mode? If I did, they won't have a, yet a red bar underneath them, but it looks like I got them all. Except for these two, which were station moded ages ago. Don't know if there's another way to check for station mode or not, but that's neither here nor there. So now, that certainly gets all the mines going, which seems all well and good, but it's not enough. What I want is a shipyard so I can build other, um, other factories there. Now, I don't need to do that. I could just build one, two, three, four, five, six station founder ships here and then dock them all. You know what, that's kind of a better idea than building my own shipyard over there. But not good enough. I still want a shipyard there. So build me... I don't really care what the ship is, but... Uh, conductor Shipyard. Doesn't need a name. I'll never need multiple of them, I think. Yeah, I think. Station founder, blah blah blah, 34 seconds, crew included, please build that for me. Then I'm going to dock that to me and then fly it over and establish my shipyard there. Station founding is another extremely cool mechanic in this game. And I think it's so cool because of the sheer level of freedom that it affords you. While it's in the progress of entering station mode, <clears throat> will there be an orange... Oh, there will be an orange progress bar. You can just double-click in the strategic mode to jump to all the stations. Ah, there's an idea. Right, you there, station founder. Station founder has a very low jump range itself. So, why even worry about that when we could just take it with us? Provided I can line this up. Come on. Come on. There we go. I was a little worried that I couldn't dock one of these, but I was certain that I could. I can also smash it against myself instead of docking it. There we go. And now I can use my immense jumping range to just bring it straight over. where you go, your ship is under attack. Where is this? Game is having immense difficulty loading that there. Oh, would you look at that? There are three oyster pirates that have spawned in here in a place absolutely full of my industry and it also is being actively protected by Sylvana Sobek, the Tactical Assault Pyramid, and Amaterasu and the pirates are already dead. They were never going to have a good time. Right, you there, my poor little chugging station founder. At least you work. Just get over here, uh, found your station, which is of course going to be a shipyard. Could be anything, but I want a shipyard. Donk. Crunch, and then I'm going to transform you. Doesn't really matter what you become, so I think I'll just shove you into a mine, a typical factory. Why not? It's not like I'm scarce on resources. The downside of doing this, though, is you've got to hire your own crew to put them to work, and even then, I think we found that that's insufficient crew, isn't it? Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. 
Still need to add 13 crew to you. But we can do that. There we go, just like that. And I brought you over here so that I could make additional ships. Why is there an enemy here? Oh, the Cavalier don't like me. There's nothing I want to tell you, I'm not surprised. Curse the Cavalier and their storyline missions. Okay, how many of these do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we build a ship, we call it a station founder, and we start naming them what they are. So this is <clears throat> Conductor Solar Power 01. There's only going to be one of them, but that's okay. And then I want another ship. This is going to be Conductor Scrap Metal. Scrap Metal. Again, just naming them 01. It's a good convention. And regrettably, I think it can only build two ships in tandem. So if I wanted to build my steel factory, steel 01. Yeah, maximum capacity. I do not know if there's a way to boost the capacity of a shipyard. But I suppose it doesn't really matter, does it? Still only 30 seconds each, regardless of the capacity. So steel 01, build. And then with those set up, it's just conductors all the way. How hard could it be? So I just take each of these while they're building those, and I just need to fly them off. Whee! And as soon as they're far away from anything else, I can just say, found the station, and you are the solar power, which is a basic one. Solar power plant, donk, yes. And then again, we just turn you into a whatever. <clears throat> Looks like I use factories. Do I really want to use factories? I mean, the mine works just as well for you. Yeah, if they are factories, I prefer to actually apply factory proper to them. So, Azar, you're a big factory now. You need to auto-assign your crew. You need to hire your own crew. And yeah, the fact that that's insufficient always bothers me. Just means that malcontent has to come over and... Uh, that's the wrong one. Where was I? I need to be careful not to fly into my own ships here. Where did my solar power plant go? It's right there. Maybe I should design the factory such that it needs just a few fewer people. Because as it stands, I always have to come over and say transfer over a bunch of people. And the real kicker is you need to become the ship again in order to have them actually transferred over properly. Right, scrappy metal, where are you going? A weird and crummy design for the ship. Alright, found the station, scrap metal trader. Weird kind of factory, it just generates scrap metal out of nothingness. I suppose the implication is that people come over and take their crummy old ships and scraps over to you. But even so, become a factory, auto assign your crew, and have malcontent come over. Don't worry, the real fun of actually setting up the supply lines is just around the corner once we set all of these up. I'm doing this one at a time so I don't miss any of them, otherwise I get an alert later on saying, oh, one of your stations is taking heavy damage, when what's actually happening is the lack of crew means it's not getting repaired. So there we go. Oh, that's right, you also need to hire your own crew. Where do these crew come from? We'll never know, but they do get to work. And then Steel Factory. Hello, Jake. I've reached the barrier, says Admira. In my game of Avorion, I have a question. What a good weapon or combination of weapons is. The shields are getting so big, shield melting weapon is needed. Besides, a hull melting one and short range is dangerous. I recommend, if you've only just reached the barrier, is to 
try a turret factory and make a very good weapon. I still have one left over from our early game here. If I sort this from DPS per slot and then just ignore all this trash. Here we go. An antimatter bolter. You can make one of these near the center. This one's tech 50. Anything above tech 40 should be fine. Make one of these in a turret factory and they will destroy just about everything for a long time. And if you need the ingredients for it, you can easily go back to the iron zone and just privateer what you need. But I highly recommend making one of these long range bolters. 12 kilometers is fine. The antimatter will destroy hull and it's got very good DPS. Bolters usually do. Minces everything. It's not cheap, but you should have plenty of ways to make money if you've already breached the center. If you need to melt shields, make a plasma weapon. But to me, it's more important just to get the DPS in, and that's where the bolters come in. I love bolters. Right, lost my train of thought, but I believe I was founding my steel station. I'm surprised I only need one here. I normally need a lot of steel. Steel factory, use the kind that requires scrap metal, not the one that needs carbon. God, no. Chunk. Turn yourself into a typical factory.xml. And then hire your own crew. You got 38 in this one. Tell the crew to get to work. Tell Malcontent to staff it up properly. I'm assuming that you are a okay. You look fine to me. It's kind of a shame that these stations don't all have unique icons, so I'd know which one is steel, but you're steel. Transfer over 15 people. They get to work, you can tell because the icon at the top went away. And now, malcontent, it's time to make the final three of these. So build another ship. And this will be Conductor... Hmm, what am I going to call this anyway? Factory Conductors? Zero one? I guess... Yeah, i got to stick with my naming convention. And then I want to build another one, Factory Conductor 2. And then once one of them's done, I can uh, line up the third one. And then we actually get to do the real fun, which is setting them all up to distribute their goods to each other. That's a very nice bolter, yeah. Turret factory. There, there are so many turret factories. Uh, granted, I've mapped everything here, but if we look for turret factory, bloop, within any... Uh, yeah. Within any civilized area, there are loads of turret factories. So you can just jump between them and find one that has a uh, has something for you. If you build your own turret factory, you can re-roll the turrets that show up. And you will eventually want your own Tech, 30, uh, tech 52 turret factory. Shipyard, build me a third conductor factory. Is it Conductor or Conductors? Uh, I think it's Conductor, singular. So I'm gonna have to rename them to get rid of that disgrace. I want to follow the game's nomenclature, lest I get confused. Uh, station founder, here we go. We're not getting attacked by pirates or by the Zotan because I set up the little uh, energy suppressor around here. And I'm feeling very glad I did that, because I can just imagine how much they would ruin this situation. There you are, factory conductor 03. And let's get them out and set up. One. I think you need to be three kilometers away from another station in order to actually found your station, even if they're your own. Found station, is it a low tech thing? No, conductors are advanced. Huh, very cheap for an advanced factory, but it's no high-tech factory. Conductor, boom, yes. 
and once again become a typical factory and hire your own crew and tell your crew to get to work because if I don't have them working around here they're gonna get destroyed and run all the tech blocks I guess that's important for having the shields work if I had to guess number two similar story get away from the rat race found your advanced conductor factory Blanc. typical factory established auto assign your crew and then hire your own crew did I tell the other one to hire its own crew? I feel like I did not guess I did and number three Getting materials is a hassle. Normally, yes, Edmira. So what you do is you go and steal it from other people. Let me set up this factory and I will explain because I think it's yet another one of the very cool things in this game. Found station, advanced, conductor, yes, yes. And again, become typical factory and hire your own crew and tell your crew to get to work all right and now malcontent make sure that they're all full of crew and then we can get to work properly yeah mines are money printers the zinc mine is the best but if you're not in a good place for zinc copper is fine silicon is fine aluminium is fine give each of them 15 of our far too many clones. Mine, mine, where are the other ones? No good icon to go by, of course. There's a conductor factory. Here's your 15 extra crew. Donk. Katonk. You're sorted, so the last one is you. Malcontent, please go over to it. The game's pathing in this is surprisingly good. I know it does occasionally collide with something that looks ridiculous, but overall I am generally very impressed with it. Okay, yeah, Admir, if you find that it's a bother getting materials for guns, what you do is you go out to the disgusting iron sector here, and you search for turret supply shop. There are lots of them. Even if you have to declare war, it's fine. Just pick on someone out here and destroy their turret factory suppliers and their turret factories while you're at it. And they will drop so many goods for making guns. More than you'll need, at least at that point in the game. That is actually how I got just about all of the goods for my guns, is just raiding the iron people. And they can't fight back, they have no shields, their weapons are garbage. But their goods, well, they're still good. Okay, so we've got all this set up. We've built all of the factories and the mines that are here, or that we need. Now what do we do? Well, we go and upgrade all of them. So, Zinc Mine S. We maximize your parallel production. We maximize how many you put out. You do not buy goods from others. You can sell to others. Actively? Mm, no. I want you to be able to give out your goods. Well, you know what, I'll keep it on that. I'm going to keep everyone on 0% though. And, 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 and your goods need to go. Let me think, I've only got one zinc mine here, don't I? And the conductor factory needs it all, so you're going to have to deliver your goods to all three conductor factories. Speaking of which, this is the conductor factory. 
It needs energy cells, gold, platinum, steel, and zinc. Which is why we set up everything that we have here. But let's work from the bottom to the top on this list. Noble Metal Mine. Maximize parallel production. Maximize the transported goods. You can sell at 0%, but your main goal is to give your goods over. There we go. By the way, Conductor, it was gold, platinum, but not silver that you need. That's why we made gold, platinum, silver, plat, so we had more excess to give away. I see. Very clever. So, this other one, again, maximize parallel production, maximize transport volume. Give it over to all of the... Uh, I don't like that ordering here. Ooh, I really don't like that ordering. One, two, three. Okay, redoes it for me. Sell at zero is fine. And another one. Maximize, maximize. Transport at maximum capacity, that's fine. I really hope it's only three of these that I needed. One, two, and three. All it goes. Zero percent. Although it gets, it gets traded to my own factories for free. But if anybody does come along and buy the excess, they can have it at zero percent markup. And again... Maximize, maximize, don't buy but sell, 0%. And we can look at that, the price of gold and platinum around here. Platinum is a bit slumping, but gold is pulsating. Oh, fine by me, we've got to sell this stuff anyway. And again, make sure you give it over to the conductor factories. And you know what, another noble metal mine. 0%, there's no copy paste for this, that's for sure. Maximize, maximize, conductor, 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 dunk, and noble metal mine, zero percent, sell, maximize, maximize, give over to conductor, conductor, and conductor, and now all those mines are double XL, so now for the coal mine, the final mine, maximize, maximize, this guy, he's going to be making six parallel productions of four bits of coal each. I don't mind selling the excess, but the main point of this is to go over to the steel factory. Tell me about the steel factory. The steel factory generates six lines of six units of steel each, gobbling up all of that coal, each line eating up a whole line of coal, so it's one to one. It eats a lot of scrap metal though, so we're going to have to make sure that scrap metal does his duty. You can deliver goods over to here. You should probably also be taking goods from scrap metal and coal mine. Uh, selling is fine, but do be sure to give your goods over to uh, the guys that need it. Solar power plant again. I might regret turning on this actively sell, but I just want to be able to get rid of excess goods. Besides, every six seconds it should be throwing over all the goods to the other guys that need it first. You don't need to fetch, you just straight up make energy cells. I think I think producing energy cells is terrible business, because it's low value. Granted, it's very high quantity, but that sometimes just makes it clog up in the stations. Anyway, you're double XL'd. Scrap Trader. You just generate a lot of scrap out of nowhere. 60, that's a ton. And this could be a problem, because you're making six lines of 60, and we can only transport 50 volume every six seconds. Even so, give it over to the steel factory, and the steel factory will also be fetching from you and the coal mine. So hopefully that flows enough. I guess we'll find out if it does or does not. And then finally, the conductor factories. Maximum parallels going. They don't have to give it to anywhere, but they do want well, they've got a lot of places to fetch, don't they? But I have faith that everyone's going to be delivering it to them. So they don't need to fetch at all. So I just need to go to each of them. 0% their goods. And you know what? Rather than 0% their goods, I think I'm going to base price 20% them. Because if anybody wants to go and buy my conductors, they're going to have to pay for the privilege. And these conductors are meant to be given over to the... Um, to the accelerator factory anyway, so if anybody wants to buy them, suck luck to them. So yeah, max that out. Da -da 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 -da. Nobody is set to actively buy. 
So we shouldn't be importing anything whatsoever for any of this setup. At least you spent your 30 minutes allotted web cafe time on Jake. You're one of the good ones, says Roskill. And I think I've missed some context on that. Iron people. Oh, you mean the Greeks? They're still pre-Bronze Age over there. Uh, making fun of the iron people. It's just the right thing to do. All right, looking good. So the Church of Akit still frequents here, so they can be kind of my protection. I'm running the protection racket, but they do the actual protection. Um, so if there is anything warping in here for a fight, they should be taken care of. And if they're not the many millions of hull that each of my stations have here, it should be more than sufficient to take care of anything. And I'm curious to see how this is all going. Let's look at the conductor factory, and immediately it is operational. As well it should be. So even though the price of zinc and steel and gold and energy cells are very high in this sector, platinum's quite low, probably because of all the platinum mines I built, uh, it doesn't have to pay a penny for its materials. And it's cranking out six lines of 20 conductors each. Uh, anyone want to run the numbers on that? It's quite a lot. 120 conductors every 15 seconds at a value of 274 credits each. That is not too shabby money. I wouldn't recommend this as a money-making venture, though. This is more a... Uh, uh, I keep bringing up the word for this, and I keep forgetting. A vanity project, because we already make the money off conductors. But it feels good to produce everything without needing imports. You don't need to wait on unreliable traders. You don't need to pay the dosh for it. They're just here and making me the moolah. In fact, I can look over at my factory overview. Disable Alliance... I will not sign these over to the Alliance, at least I don't think I will, because although I might get a bit of economy spam, it allows me to differentiate between my Alliance factories, which okay are making pant-wettingly large sums of money, but at least I can make sure that these guys are actually functioning good and proper and making me the money they should sort by name. And then there's our factory conductors at the bottom. And nobody should be paying expenses. There's a little bit of expense here. The only reason was because when I set them up, I didn't immediately click don't import. So some of them must have bought in some goods even though I didn't want them to. Same with the steel factory. But, 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 looking like they're working. There's a scrap metal trader making loads of scrap metal. I worry a bit about his throughput. There's the conductor factory getting in a shipment of goods. Instantly putting it to use, making conductors. And I can check your cargo right here. Loading up with those conductors, 20 being made per cycle there. Mm. Man, it says average credit 168 value on the conductors, but we know that they sell for a lot more. I think they even make more than that because they get a 20% bonus due to taxes. If you'll believe that or not. Alright, well, with conductors done, we have done one of the seven things that we need for the accelerator factory. But there's one final thing I want to do right now. That is find somewhere that has a reasonable price for accelerators in this area. All accelerators tend to be the same, so if I just check for electron accelerators, I'm going to go and hopefully find somewhere within the Avorion region that has a demand for them. So I'm going to bring Malcontent over to here. The closer I am to the center, the happier I am with these kinds of things. Pew! I'm going to need another ship for this, by the way. Um, hmm. Hey, merchant! Not a lot the merchant needs to do right now. Although, why even make merchant? You know what? I will, I will bring you over here. Merchant man. I want you over here. You don't need any help. Just get over here. You know, this is a game that I think suffers from being too big. The galaxy does not need to be this size, and it does not need to have 130 goods in it. But of course, 
you can't really strip away features from a completed game. Fans would eat you up alive. So I don't have a good idea of what they should do with it. Maybe I'll do a feedback write-up on the game. Right, back over to Malcontent. I just think that things like beer and grain and luxury food, they serve no in-game purpose. Right, I'm curious. Electron accelerators. How's the demand around here? I know there are some accelerator factories in the area, but this looks good. This looks pretty good. The closer to the center, the happier I am. It is already on Electron Accelerator. Looks like things could be pretty good over here, but I don't want to go so close to the center because that means the Zotan could absolutely brutalize the thing. But... I might just be able to get a good price for my accelerators around here. There's a resource, a repair dock, resource, trading post, travel hub. Is there a shipyard around here? Coal mine, noble mine. There's got to be a shipyard around here. Uh, scrap yard. Ah, there we go, there's a shipyard. I'm going to check the prices around here a little bit and see where to set up because there's one final thing that I need to do. <laughs> I've got a slot, I think, on tomorrow's stream, and it says Avorion or Gun. I want to get this done so I can say for sure that it's going to be Gun. Gun's been good fun. Where just became a hazard zone? <laughs> Where I was just at suddenly became a hazard zone. <laughs> that amuses me greatly. Right. Trading overview for this area. Tell me about the electron accelerators. The price is only plus 5.7. That's about what you'd expect. It's very hard, maybe even impossible, to find a place that has the highest demand for electron accelerators. I try the. I try here first, then the shipyard. I'm not going to completely shop around, but I'm going to see the price over in this. Uh, sector first. Since they just have such obscene value, every little bit of markup makes a big difference. In fact, I spammed research centers in one place just to see how high I could get the demand for accelerators. Electron accelerators here, 6.9. That's actually very good. So that's the most promising place. I think we got it as high as 14 by spamming research centers. Not worth it, but an interesting exercise. So it was 6.9 in the last one, and this is 6.0. All the more reason to go 6.9 then. I need one more station founder out of the shipyard, please. Build me a ship worthy of Mordor. And this would be... Acce uh, factory... Accelerators... Is it accelerators? Plural? Probably, because it makes three different kinds of accelerators. Um, I'm going to call it zero, 00 because it's the Zero Cost Accelerator Factory. Build it and we shall come. Also, I need to strap that um, ship to my ship again. These little hangout turrets just look so daft. The prophecy has never and will never fail us. The reason they're saying that is because this is a religious cult of a faction. If we go to Diplomacy, check by distance. Followers of Legibobt. The followers part telling us that they are a religious faction. Mistrustful, honourable, brave and aggressive. There we go. There's our accelerator factory. We just gotta calmly nudge our way up towards, not accidentally smash, like that, but instead dock to our ship. Wow, I just cleaved off 16.5% uh, of that ship, but that's okay, I'll see the funny side. So we're starting to see some little bits in the bottom left, 
economic updates about how the stations that we founded are doing. That is the single biggest reason that I put all of my stations and mines over to the Alliance, so that I wouldn't get this spam. Silph Platt sold silver, Silph Platt sold silver, Silph Platt sold silver. Sold silver, sold coal, sold zinc. They're selling the excess that isn't currently getting used up by the production line. And that's good, because if it's not being used, I at least want to get my money out of it. However, I don't want to be notified about it, and there's no easy way to turn it off. You could turn off everything and just be in sector or group or just see economy, but there's no way to just trim out these little bits, which is why I put them over to the Alliance where they can be filtered out. Right, let's undock you, become you, and then get you established. Well, uh, okay, right. Found a station, high-tech accelerator factory, absolutely yes. Blonk. And then we, oh, you don't need to be repaired. Interesting, but you do need to be an advanced factory setup. Good chunk. Why you have all these iron stones, I do not know. I thought I had this thing set up to be made of organite. I was 90% sure I had set these factories up to use organite instead of iron. Maybe I was still cheaping out back then, but that's easily sorted. Uh, sorted. We go to iron, we, uh, we say, show me all the stone, and we say, don't ever make stone out of iron, make stone out of organite. And then we say, stone edge. And we grab all the stone edges, of which there don't appear to be any. Oh, that's smart edge. Stone edge. Also select that. And look what it's doing for the hull. Just went from about 2 million to 8 million. And now we do organite stone edge replacement. Now it's 14 million. And then stone corner ones. There are plenty of those. Grab those. Make it into organite stone corner one. Dunk. And now it's the same ship. It's just covered in organite. Also, it's all red for some reason. Well, that's okay. Red things go faster, and we need this thing to produce fast. You still have some iron cargo bays. That's a lot of cargo bay. Are these really all cargo bays? I guess they are. Anyway, I will just make them out of organite to give myself obscene amounts of hull. It's currently 16 million. What if it were 17 million? What if the crew quarter was made of organite? What if there was no iron left on this thing at all? Also, is that enough crew quarter? Maybe it is pretty big after all. There we go, 17 million hull. And this thing's very important to me. It already has some shield, but I'm actually going to bulwark it. And then I'm going to energy to shield convert it. I'm not gonna use my precious exotics, but I'll certainly use my exceptionals. go. One multiplier, two multiplier, three multiplier, four, eh, five multipliers, six multiplier, and then we're actually going to need some generated energy to bounce back against all of that. There you go. That's still insufficient, so I'll give you another one. There we go. Generates energy, 60 million shield, 17 million hull, doesn't afraid of anything. Assigns its own crew. Very importantly, as quickly as we can, do not buy goods from others. You may actively sell your goods for... I'd love to put a pump up on this, but I don't think I'd actually sell them. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with 0%. I'm just going to maximize the production lines and the transport. Not that it needs them, just gets it off my back. And we can see all the stuff that it needs here. Turbines, plasmas, fusions, energies, high pressure tubes, conductors, and gauss rails. Most of which are very expensive here, but it doesn't matter. We won't be paying for any of them. I will also, of course, hire my own crew. I will then speak to Malcontent, and Malcontent will also give me some crew. I don't know how many I need. Give me 50. Is that sufficient? And it was just enough. Now, it's set up and it's long awaiting a lot of goods being brought over. We will start by doing one. 
Where are you, merchant man? <laughs> Suddenly the demand for electronic accelerators just plummeted in the area. Um, M and M and M. I'm actually wanted to get out of this region as soon as I can, just in case there's a nasty attack here. I want to go somewhere that has a... Mm, yeah, what do I want? Oh, there's a bunch of stuff I want, but what am I going to get? I think I'll just blast myself down here for now. Pew! If you hang around in a sector, especially if you haven't deployed that energy suppressor thing, you can get nasties just coming out of nowhere. So let's switch over to where we do have the energy suppressor. The red thing only works if you're an orc. Well, we've certainly been clubbing the iron people for their goods like we're a Warhammer orc. Hey, look, we are the merchant man. Merchant has nothing in the cargo bay, which is good, because now you're getting a an order that I almost never give. In fact, I've never really properly used, have I? Supply factories. I want you to provide... Hang on, hang on, we can do this. I want you to use my conductor factory and my conductor factory and my conductor factory to bring all of their conductors over to my one accelerator factory. You will do this indefinitely and it will apparently take you 48 minutes. What if I only told you to do one? If you do one, it'll take you 16 minutes. Hmm. All right. Oh, and it's already done. Cool, I don't even need to wait for a signal. That is the final one done. Great, that saves me. Wait, what? Okay, that was a cool little bug there. Maybe not that cool, but it was interesting. Where's my merchant man? Stop that. Nintendo, don't hire this man. Now I do want you doing that forever and ever. So your job is going to be supplying all of those conductors. Conductor, not coal mine. Over to that accelerator factory forevermore. And that will be one of the seven, potentially more, uh, little guys that we have flying around giving those goods over to do the production line. So get on it. And with that, we have finished the final milestone. Back to Malcontent and get the confirmation. There we go. Connect two of your factories using the supply command. I couldn't do this until now because all of my factories were thrown over to the Alliance and that disqualifies this. Couldn't actually uh, activate this when they were in the Alliance. I was fooling around in insane mode. I just ran into a pirate with immunity to physical. Whoa, I've never seen that. Immunity to physical. Huh. Well, I use a variety of weapons, so no one immunity does me in, but early on, that would be a big problem. You don't tend to get a lot of non-physical weapons early on. Still, they're all done. Every single milestone in this bleeding game. 84 out of 84. They weren't all cool, but some of them certainly were. And that is where I call it here and today. I actually have no idea if I'm going to do all this on stream. That's a lot of building up garbage over the course of a very long time. We did one of seven of the setups, and it was a setup that needed something like 10 factories. Some of them are going to need 70 to 80 of them, including finding the mines. But it is kind of cool setting up the production line. It's kind of the, it's kind of the apex of the whole situation. What do I do? What do I do? I'll think of something, but my leading idea is that off stream I'll get the mines ready, because that's the most laborious and thankless part of it all. And then on stream I'll actually set up the production lines, because I think that's where the real juice of it is. If there is any juice to be squeezed out of the rock that is my perfect hands of dreams. So, don't expect any of Orion anytime soon. I'll get around to that when I get around to it. But do keep this in mind. I'm always on the hunt for more games that I can do the perfect Hansa style playing of. It's important that it is a simulating game of some sort. To this day, the games that I've done like this are Capitalism Lab, Patrician 4, Railway Empire, Rise of Industry, of Orion now. 
or anything else I'm in, that's eluding me. Anyway, I like to, I have a compulsion to do games like this, so if you know games that fit this kind of bill, especially with the whole economic simulation part of it, or growing something, growing cities, growing economies. Yeah, Victoria doesn't count either. I don't want to play Victoria. I just want to think about playing it. In any case, gonna call it there. Feel pretty damn good with how this run has gone. Admittedly, it's not how the game should be played. You should enjoy your journey to the center and saving the galaxy and doing all that. This run was kind of optimized a lot of fun out of the game, especially post, uh, post barrier break, maybe post uh, boss destruction. But I still love Avorion. This game's fantastic and it's constantly being developed as well. I wonder if they're working on anything new. If so, I look forward to seeing it. But uh, until I am back with some inevitable conclusion to this, and of course with more streams tomorrow, I got DDR and Gun on the line. It is cheers from me, and a cheerio.